in my life. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is VGM, and this is going to be the remake of Bowser's Inside Story. I'm sure many of you have actually played Mario & Luigi games in the past. Uh, this is pretty standard in the series. Actually, it is one of the best-selling games in the entire series. Um, this is the remake. Unfortunately, the remake didn't sell as well. Uh, actually, it sold the worst out of the games, and arguably led to Alpha Dream's bankruptcy, which is very unfortunate. But, that being said, uh, might as well go on ahead and get started with the run. I'm gonna give a countdown. In three, two, one, go. So this is ran on the English version of the game. And while there aren't too many version differences, um, that being text included, it was recently found, at least if the findings are truly accurate, that the Japanese version actually has faster loads for some strange reason. It appears that my capture is going in weird places. Is it going to fix itself? It seems to not be wanting to work. What the, what's going on here? There we go. So yes, uh, this game is kind of weird. Uh, we will be switching in and out of Bowser several times. Yeah, pretty much start of the game. Uh, there's something to do with the blorbs. The toads are swelling up. And we have to solve that. Also, fair warning about the capture. Um, I do not have a 3DS capture card. So unfortunately, I'm having to resort to 3DS homebrew. Which, for some strange reason, whenever I go to mash and cutscenes, it... What is happening today? Whenever I go to mash and cutscenes, it causes it to... cut out. I'm gonna not use my faster mashing method. I'm gonna use my other mashing method instead. Which seems to be working fine now. Okay, I think we're fine. Uh, cutscenes will be a bit slower though, unfortunately. I need to bit about the, the remake of this game. You can actually mash with A, B, X, and Y. And you can fast forward in cutscenes. When compared to the original game, you can't do that. You can only mash with A, I think it's A and X, and you cannot fast forward. So we take, um, take control of the bros, and tutorial section real quick. Yeah, unfortunately, I was unable to acquire a new 3DS XL capture card because the installer of the capture card has officially stated they will never be returning to installing them, so the only way of actually getting one is to install it yourself. Which obviously is not doable. It's a tad unfortunate. Anyways, entering our first fight. Of course, staple of the series tutorial battle. We want to jump on Bowser here, and then we're going to get an OK hit to offset the damage dealt. So that we can save a turn, or rather save an animation. Here on out, it's all excellent attacks. Yeah, for 3DS Capture, you had to pretty much get it whenever it was available, and if you didn't have the money, then you were out of luck. Now, they're, they just don't exist. Or you can get an, an old 3DS Capture card and save time on loads. Or lose time on loads, excuse me. So you could either save time and have a lower quality stream, or lose time and have a higher quality stream. It's a bit unfortunate. Alright, 
Time to gain control of Bowser for a little bit. Since Peach has thrown Bowser out of the castle using magic. How she is able to do that is completely unknown. Power of friendship and all that nonsense. Here's Bowser. So something neat about the Bowser sections of this game, um, I'm not really sure if it would be called something neat, actually. Most of his experience is actually gained from giant battles in the original game. In this version, uh, giant battles do not give experience, which means Bowser doesn't really gain much experience in the remake. Uh, if you don't do any grinding at all, you'll actually enter one of the, uh, really late game fights at level 7. While well, they're over level 20. Obviously not a good situation to be in. My R button is acting up. That is unfortunate. So you actually do have to grind a bit in this remake. Because otherwise you will be incredibly underleveled. And trust me, dealing with that fight underleveled is not fun. Not fun at all. And yes, 3D simulation is a bit weird. It sort of works for these games. Sorta. Of. Kinda. Of. There, there is a 60 FPS patch as well. Um, how well that works, I cannot speak to. Because this, this game runs at 30 FPS, by the way. The remake of Superstar Saga runs at 60. It was a choice on this game's part. Probably has to do in part with the development of this game, since Alpha Dream was financially struggling at the time. If my R button will work, we will be able to get through this game faster. Alright. First Bowser section of the run, or the inside Bowser section of the run. This is where a lot of the, the bros fights will be taking place. This is, called, this is called Bowser's Inside Story, after all. Pretty bad movement there, but that's fine. And this is where we find Starlo. Interesting tidbit. You can actually platform over to where Starlo is there with a well-timed jump. However, you cannot rescue Starlo early. Nothing happens if you jump up to where Starlo is. You actually have to do this puzzle. Or quote-unquote puzzle. Wouldn't really call it that. Yeah, the jumping physics in this game are a little bit floaty, so you can make some jumps that just find out were not possible in the original. Just because of the physics. The original physics were a lot tighter, and the original also runs at 30 FPS. Or 60 FPS, excuse me. And yes, Bowser Jr.'s Journey is the add-on game. It is not part of this game. However, it is included um, in the game. So, you, you can play it if you want. It plays completely differently from any Mario RPG, though. It is more like an auto-battler, in a sense. It's hard to explain. I honestly think the two sides of this game appeal to very different audiences. As you can see, the uh, the background in here looks a lot more detailed, I suppose, compared to the original. Can I avoid these encounters? For some reason, I tend to get hit by these things. That is very annoying. Dodging encounters in this game is really difficult. Yes, even a solo Mario. There's Luigi. Luigi? Luigi. Here's one of the harder tutorial fights to do properly. I'm gonna try to see if I can get this correct. We have to make sure not to kill the enemies uh, sooner um, than we're supposed to, because if, if you kill an enemy while the tutorial is ongoing, what will happen is, uh, 
the enemy will respawn with full HP, which is very bad. I'm gonna take a hit here, intentionally, so that we don't do that. Okay. Deal only okay hits to the bottom one, so that they all have 6 HP at the end of the turn. And then Starlo is now going to... Yep. No. Uh-oh. I did a bad. I messed up. I accidentally said yes to the tutorial. Well, guess we're uh, gonna get the extra experience from this fight. Whoops. That is what happens when you aren't paying attention to menus. Reminder, pay attention when speedrunning games. It goes a long way. That's fine. It'll make an upcoming tutorial kind of faster? Sort of? Hopefully, I don't get too many tutorials this run. Okay, so... Something that you all might not like is that I'm actually going to go into the settings and enable easy mode. Also assistance, because reasons. Helps with the uh, dodging attacks, I guess. Because one shot equals death. Um, easy mode in this game makes things slightly less tedious. It turns out the route for normal mode is actually not really different. Things just take longer on normal mode. A lot of the fight stress at the end of the game are also the exact same. So it doesn't make too much of a difference whether you're playing on easy or normal. It's just because it's it's a bit faster. And you literally get one shot anyways, in most cases. Easy mode is best. So like normal mode is really harder, just things take slightly less damage. But trust me, the easy mode in this game is nowhere near as strong as it is in games like Dream Team. So there is not going to be too much curb stomping. Well, there, there will be. Um, we'll get to that later. There's some interesting equipment in this game, but the curb stomping isn't going to be because of the uh, difficulty mode we're playing. That's more related to typos in coding and formulas and stuff. Pretty funny. But we're quite a bit away from that. For now we have to play the game somewhat intended. It's a neat little, uh, not really a skip there. You don't actually have to take Luigi into that loading zone. He doesn't get stuck, you can just tag it as Mario. Here's the next room. Say no to the demo, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, green shell tutorial. We're forced to use the green shells here. Otherwise, these enemies deal, deal, or you rather, dead the words cannot speak. You deal zero damage unless you use green shells. Right. Speaking is not my strong suit. As you can tell. Okay, that one's done. On the next turn, we're going to not finish off the green shell. We instead need to deal 8 damage, because these enemies have 16 HP. We dealt 8 there. We need to get 4 hits in here. Which is easy. 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to miss the green shell here, and fight is over. Decent tutorial. My menu main could have been faster. Okay, so... If you get a bad tutorial fight, um, Mario will actually get a level up here instead of on the next fight. Which slightly speeds up an upcoming tutorial fight. Because he does a lot more damage since, um, your damage in this game is based off of your level and your power. So if you just have 999 power and you're level 1, you're not going to really be doing much damage. At all. The stats aren't everything. Levels do make quite a bit of a difference. Which makes it even more painful that Bowser doesn't really get much experience in this game. Through forced encounters. Let's go. Okay. Okay, hammer tutorial.
No, I do not want to hear how to use the hand. Tharlo, don't remind me how to use the hammer. Thank you. Okay. Now I can kill them. Finally. I'm gonna use a green shell here instead of the hammer. Using the hammer in the hammer tutorial? No way. Wouldn't do that. Imagine following the tutorial. As you might have noticed, stat rolls in this game are very, very, very easy to hit. Because the stat roulette is very slow. So, uh, missing a stat roulette is very bad. Whoopsies. This isn't all bad that I took this encounter. Because I actually need to take one in this room any- Okay, good. Perfect. No time loss at all, except for... Getting hit there. It's fine. Two, three, four. I guess we have to finish off anyways. The green shell. Right. So we need this encounter here. Uh, because otherwise, if we do not take this, we will not be gaining a level after a certain battle. Which is really important. Because again, levels uh, factor in your damage. This room sucks. On my streams, I have a little meme about how many encounters am I going to take in this room. The amount of times I have had all four encounters is embarrassing. Like, seriously. There have been a few attempts where I've only had that one. And back before, that was actually in the route, a few attempts where I had zero. But, oh boy. Dodging those spiked enemies is... Honestly, it's the hardest room in the game. Mm-hmm. Like, 100% hardest room in the game. The true final boss. Actually harder than the final boss. Not even joking. Hey. Escape bells are a bit of a rude awakening. It's fine. Not gonna really question why he has switches inside of his body in the first place, but it's a Mario and Luigi game. Physics don't really apply here. Oh, yeah. okay. Alright. Now we get control of Bowser for real. DM. Oh, yeah. More with the tutorials. Did you get that? It's super important. Yeah. Alright. Watch this barrel. Do not miss. Thank you. Okay, overall movement is pretty straightforward. Especially in the beginning. We don't have any skills to make, our, make ourselves go faster. It's just walk from point A to point B. Maybe hit a few things in the way. It's not really anything special. Make sure I do not fall off this platform here. This falling off would be bad. Not when I have to do this room again. I'm pretty sure we have to punch this block in the way. I've tried several times to get past that block uh, without punching it. It just does not seem possible. I really wish it was. All right. So here's Fawful. Uh, here's the the main antagonist of the game. Is a lot of. Interesting quotes. For sure. He was also in Superstar Saga as well as one of the main antagonists. Not, not the main antagonist, but it is sort of a pretty major role in the plot. Buffal is evil. This time he has his eyes set on world domination. He wants Bowser's castle. Alright, Bowser's tutorial. Pretty straightforward. I have battle.
Yes, Fluffle does indeed have Fury. Also, yes, we, we will be seeing I have suction in this run. I do not believe that text box can be skipped. So Bowser cannot defend from attacks from above, so we lose. For now. We'll be fighting him later, though. Don't worry. No one will be fighting him again, and then we'll absolutely destroy him. With no contest. A little bit of a catchy movement there. The enemies can be in weird places. Um, you can also fall on top of the Goombas when trying to navigate that room optimally. If the Goomba's in the way there and that one where you fall, there's pretty much nothing you can do other than not falling, I guess. Not taking movement optimally? Who does that? Oh, so yeah, pretty good character moment there. Okay. The game explains the fast travel system, which we will be avoiding entirely because this is a speedrun. And funny that the fast travel system is slow. This is my mashing, but as I said before, whenever I use fast mashing, for some strange reason, it breaks the capture for a bit. Or has a higher chance of breaking the capture. Okay, really long load there for some strange reason. Even the Japanese version takes a bit on that load. Not as much time, but it's kind of weird. I don't entirely know why that load takes so long. It's the longest load in the whole game. And it doesn't even really load a big room or anything. Just really odd. Okay. Good enemy position. I don't know why I took that box, but whatever. It's fine. Fast forward, please. My R button is not working. This is a uh, question mark guy. I do not know how to pronounce his name. I'm not even going to make an attempt. I do not know f French? Is that French? I don't know languages. I have a hard enough time speaking English. Alzer power. Okay. We get our first taste of the, uh, the arm minigame inside of Bowser. Feels sort of with rhythm. It's not quite a rhythm game yet. For now, it's just shooting out random balls. We have to hit them. Yeah, the more energy balls we hit into Bowser's arm, the more stimulated he gets, and therefore the more the more strong he gets. Which is a uh, pretty neat, if you ask me. Not to pull a whole island. <laughs> and because we helped him pull his island, we now have... this. Getting bucks for coin routing. There actually isn't really much coin routing in this route, if any. Do we even buy anything in this route? I don't remember. Okay. Inhale. Done. 
In the original, sometimes you can take a turn here before he leaves. I do not think that is possible in the remake, but I am... I might be wrong. Someone in chat is free to correct me on that, if that is possible in the remake. Okay, so we actually need to take an encounter here, because it is, as I said earlier, levels, more damage. If we go into this next fight without taking an encounter, good RNG. If we got a, a different encounter from this, we would have had to run, because our, our XP routing is very tight. Um, if we don't get the amount of experience we get from this, which is 48, um, the other encounter gives 36. Uh, the experience we need is within single digits. So 12 experience off is not good. That loses us time. I, I was trying to, trying to flex there on the enemy. That didn't really work. Oh well, scuffed run, it's fine. All, all runs of this game are pretty scuffed, honestly. For quite a few reasons. One of them we'll, we'll get to. It's kind of hard to explain at the moment. I'll just say this, RNG. Don't you love losing a run to RNG? By the way, more RNG coming up. Can I get a good en Yes, okay. Perfect RNG so far. Good encounter. Again, bad RNG means we have to run because we actually need the experience from this particular encounter. Or though this particular encounter set. The other encounter is the two pokies, which... Yeah, um, they're kind of annoying to kill. Compared to just one pokey. So not only does it take more time to kill them, it's also not good because it gives us less experience. Could optionally fight the Goombas in the first area, but same problem as before, where it's not enough experience. Okay, and we got a level with Bowser. Again, level rules are absolutely free, so no problem there. Okay, now we're free to just move forward. This is the sea pipe statue. And Fawful has added, in his words, the nuts to that statue. There is a pretty interesting meme with that. Is it the way the text is cut off? Very funny game. Anyways, pretty easy fight, since it is an early game encounter. Not really much to really say here, except uh, to punch it, inhale it, punch it some more. I'm gonna use a green shell here. Do a little bit of damage. So we actually get three turns in this fight, or as Mario and Luigi, this time, for some strange reason. The, uh, the blooper doesn't want to attack after Luigi's turn, it attacks after Mario's turn, which uh, is f interesting. That is not how any other encounter works in this game. But yeah, that happens. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, just that, that it's odd. Okay, so it should be entering a fury. There it is. Um, that is whenever a boss has reached half HP. Oh, nice. We're getting uh, three punches. Good. I don't think that really matters too much, but it is there. So whenever a boss is in fury, it has uh, it does increased damage and has increased defense. It increased damage. Increased defense. Yes. Words. 
It also gets harder. Can you screen chill? This is to avoid the uh, the blooper spinning into the ground and damaging Bowser and a lot of animation time that we don't want. There it is. Chill. And it just ends the turn immediately and wants to leave Bowser. So we have a, a three turn and a one, or um, rather, yes, three turn and one turn. There's reasons. If the blooper doesn't want to follow the rules. For that, it is dead. Hit level with Bowser. Again, stat rolls are absolutely free, so the max stat roll. Unfortunately, Bowser does not have his flames, so, uh, we're kind of stuck. But Bowser's thirsty, so he starts drinking the water from the statue, and now it's time to go explore more of Bowser. This is the water area. It's interesting. Um... I need to make sure I avoid attack piece blocks in here, because this is actually where you get the fire flower. Um, the fire flower is not useful in the run at all. It would be interesting to have a route with it, but as far as I know, it's really tedious to get and not good to use. We have much better alternatives. Plus, most of the combat in this game is just dealing big damage, which the Fire Flower does not really do all that well. Plus, we get a move later on that hits all enemies anyways, so it's fine. Okay. Boobers are kind of weird to avoid. Um, we're going to be taking an encounter here. Because, again, experience. Drop down, please. Drop down, please. Okay. I'm gonna have to pray to RNG here, again. There's a lot of RNG in this run. Uh, we're gonna green shell here. There is a chance that the green shell will take out all the, the spinies before the blooper. Oh, are we getting it? Aww, rip. Um, if that happens, you save a lot of time, because you kill the blooper and everything in one single green shell. If that doesn't happen, you have to attack with Luigi. Essentially have to using another green shell because it just attacks the blooper instead of an actual spiny. Pretty unfortunate. Okay, we got the level up, though. It's fine. It's a minor time loss. Again, levels matter a lot for damage. We will be doing some grinding in this run. Especially for Bowser. Because otherwise, uh, no. I don't even want to think about what doing a run of this without granting as Bowser would be like. It sounds like torture. Alright, so we're going to take a quick detour here to grab the parry glasses, which have uh, an effect of pretty much letting any damage you take be emergency blocked, which is a uh, feature that I think was added in Paper Jam, which reduces the damage you take, but you, you can't dodge. I'm stupid. What am I doing? Wrong way. Yeah, uh, I run this game a lot and I still get lost. <laughs> kind of funny how that works. Even though it's very straightforward and very linear. Anyways, the reason why we got the Perry Glass isn't because it allows us to emergency block, it's because it also has an added effect of plus 10 power. Which, for this early in the game, is major. That pretty much increases our power by, like, 30% at the moment. Actually, it's a really good item regardless. So for it to just be stashed away here this early in the game is interesting. I do not think the item exists in the original because, again, Perry. Added in Paper Jam, Bells and Side Story, the original, what's before Paper Jam. So. 
more instances of combat that is added in the remake, absolutely breaking things. But we're not at quite broken levels yet. We will get there. For sure. I have to remember to equip the parry glasses. Also, I almost got screwed over by water mechanics there. If the birds are too far apart from each other, uh, all swimming mechanics are disabled. So they, they fall. You can't bring Mario up to Luigi, and you can't bring Luigi down to Mario. Or, well, yes. Pretty much, if they're too far apart, you just fall. And there's nothing you can really do about that. You have to keep them together as much as possible. Otherwise, it gets very, very dicey. Very dicey. Wait, what? Why did that cutscene not trigger? What? Well, normally that cutscene triggers before you walk into the... What? Why did that trigger once I was... Inside of the cutscene... What? Okay. I'm not gonna question that. The game is weird. I'm gonna guess it has something to do with the water animation. Well, please, tutorial. Okay. So in the remake, you actually don't really have to have Starlo teach you this. You can just do it yourself. Which is pretty neat. Okay. Hammer this. An upcoming room here. Uh, it's just a room right... Or to my left, excuse me. He's uh, really annoying to dodge for encounters. I'm hoping I don't get ambushed. That would be bad. As usual. Getting ambushed is bad. In RPGs. Especially if it's an avoidable in... Other... Yes! Okay. That was really sketchy. We managed to dodge it. Really good. Okay, more of this. I'm gonna lower the water here so I can fall down. And that better fit better physics. Wow, I really can't do worse today. Okay, time to swim back up and not have Luigi get stuck on the ceiling there, because if you get stuck on the ceiling, once again, you fall. And falling when Mario has upward momentum is awful. Really bad. <laughs> oh no! Luigi! <laughs> yeah, that's what happens, uh... When the bros are separated, you are forced into doing that to get them back together because they they both can't swim. S swimming is locked for some strange reason. I don't really know why. Maybe it's a failsafe of some sort. I don't really know what for. It's very annoying either way. Actually not sure if the mechanic exists in the original. I want to say it doesn't, but again, my knowledge of the original is pretty lacking. I haven't played it in quite a while. So for anyone that may know more about the original, can speak up about that. But I want to say it isn't in the original. Either way, whenever Mario is small, it is very annoying because Luigi isn't small, so Mario can take corners that Luigi cannot. There's the parry glasses, and equip those. Free 10 power, and upgrade from 31 to 41. Massive for early game. And now we just need to leave the pump works, because we're finished here. Dang it. Stupid swimming mechanics got me again. Okay. 
Now we can leave. Also, sometimes I forget to equip the parry glasses in runs, and it really sucks, because... <laughs> this upcoming fight is kinda long, not really. It's not the longest fight, it's up there in length, though. I'll make Mario small. I'm gonna do a jump here that's decently tight, not really. Alright, we're fine. We got the jump, it's fine. We're saving time. There are a lot of jumps like that, where you can just uh, potentially save time, or if you miss them, uh, rip. you lose quite a bit of time. All or nothing jumps. All right. So th this bug here is blocking Bowser's flame pipe, which we need to destroy it, so that Bowser can actually escape and do something. Otherwise, he's pretty much just stuck there. Mario does six damage. Here, Luigi does four. Fairy glasses are really cool. Further increases the stat divide between the two bros. Actually, the stat divide, uh, it's gonna be offset later on. For a bit, Mario is gonna be our primary, uh, damage dealer, I suppose. Uh, later on, Luigi is gonna be the primary damage dealer. Because Luigi has bros moves that scale towards his stats more than Mario's. And they're really strong. And with Mario's bros moves being not so much. What I mean by Mario and Luigi bros moves is I mean basically the bro that the the move scales off of. There are some moves that only scale off of Luigi's damage. Snack basket, for instance. Or at least if it if it scales off of Mario's damage, it is very minimal. Using a green shell there to deal a bit more damage in hopes that we can actually skip a turn. No guarantees though. Yeah, rather long fight because we're not quite overpowered yet. Easy mode really doesn't make much of a difference in this game. The difference is there, but it's not really substantial. At some point, the easy mode and normal mode runs literally come together whenever we enter the gauntlet part of the route because uh, the gauntlet forces normal mode. Yes, we will have to actually play in normal mode for those of you that do not like easy mode in this game. We will have to play on normal. That is a requirement. The Skeletal fight was pretty slow. Could have been better. Unfortunately, th these beginning fights are very uh, tedious. Very tedious. We're not uh, past the worst of them yet, though, unfortunately. At around the halfway mark, though, fights are really going to pick up. And they're also going to get a lot harder. At a specific point, we actually have to de uh, take literally no damage um, in, in either way. 
Uh, because if we get hit with Mario, we pretty much get one shot. And lose badge meter, which we have to build throughout the entire run. And if we get hit with Luigi, he dies in one hit. And, excuse me, in one hit. And we don't get the extra experience from the an equipment, a piece of equipment that we get later on in the run called the EXP socks, which take no damage, you get double the experience. And no experience from fights sucks. A lot. So yeah, it pretty much forces you to where if you take damage at all later on in the run, you have to die and reset the fight. So not fun. This is Brocky, which is pretty much a fire tutorial. He's pretty easy, goes down in two punches. This is the first turn, the first punch. Don't miss that. Thank you. Three. Yeah, the whole thing about one-shots is the reason why I, I do not think there is a substantial difference between normal and easy mode in this game. Especially for runs. Because you get one-shot either way. And the fight strats, again, are pretty much the same. So. Alright, tutorial done, again. Rocky leaves, and we are free to explore for a bit. Don't worry, we'll, we'll be meeting them again very shortly. I'm gonna try to take an encounter here. Experience? Good. Trees are not enraged. If they are enraged, they actually take less damage. Which means they also uh, take more turns to kill, which is slow. They are not enraged. More RNG. Fun. So the next fight, we will uh, get a level up, which we need for the next boss for more damage. Level ups are important. One, three, two, four. Do not say yes to the tutorial. This tutorial is the worst. The absolute worst. Maybe later. No. No. There we go. So a little funny meme with these blocks here. Uh, you don't have to punch these at all. They're kind of misplaced, so you can just walk right past them. Many block kitties? Zero. However, we will be seeing more of them, though. And if I don't enter an encounter properly, uh... There will be no enemies on the screen in an encounter, but a Blitty on screen. Which is an interesting thing in this version of the game. If you kill an enemy with a first strike and it drops a Blitty, the fight will not end. Uh, instead, you will pretty much be forced to inhale the Blitty. Because there's nothing you can do. You can't attack, you can't really do any- I guess you can run, but you don't get the experience from the fight. Instead, you must inhale. It's very strange looking. It might happen in this run. If I'm feeling particularly, uh... You know. 
Again, there is encounter RNG when grinding. Bad encounters is not what we want. More arm minigames. It hasn't gone into rhythm quite yet. It's more just random balls at the moment. Yep. Don't know why that always catches me off guard, but it does. Oh my god, that time. Yeah, um, sorry for the frame rate during fast forward, by the way. Uh, that is actually on the, uh, on the 3DS's end. This game runs in 30 FPS, and when sped up, it does not look pretty. So I do apologize for the, uh, the really bad frame rate during, uh, frame it, or, uh, not frame advance, during fast forward. They... Yeah, this game was rushed. It's a bit unfortunate. I have fury. Tutorial fight. Let's go. This is supposed to be a Goomba Storm tutorial. By the way, Goomba Storm, best Bowser move in the whole run. We were not. We are not going to be getting any other Bowser move. This move is broken. Very broken. I'm. I'm not kidding either. It's busted. Not quite busted yet, but it. It will be. But for now, though, it's not really useful. So we're just gonna use flame instead. Yeah, first attack move you get in the game actually being busted. Pretty neat. Now, the reason why it's busted is actually because of a typo in the game's, uh... Ailing. We're gonna be getting a piece of equipment that multiplies our damage, and the multiplication actually happens twice with Goomba Storm. Obviously, that's kind of broken, no matter what the move is. Instead of simply being 2.5 times damage, it turns into 6.25 times damage. Lots of damage. <laughs> I can avoid encounters, I promise. Get low. Okay. That room sucks. Not as hard as the spike room in the trash pit, but it still sucks. Yeah, th this game being rushed will be especially apparent during giant battles. Uh, whenever giant battles happen, this this game struggles to even keep constant 30 FPS. There are times where it will drop to like 15 at best. Uh, chest. It's really bad. Remember there for a second. I have ran this game more than once, probably. Meanwhile, I still get lost and still don't memorize puzzles properly. Yay. <laughs> I also don't pay attention either, apparently. I thought I entered the next room. What is wrong with me? Yep. 
there's another notification about the, uh, the Toad Store, which we will not be visiting. Instead, we just have to sit through all the notifications that it has something new. Which sucks. I'm gonna save my game here. Just in case. Because, uh, there are actually crashes in this game. I have not per- well, I have experienced them, actually. Um... There was a pause menu crash. Whenever you're navigating the pause menu, um, it can just crash for some reason. I'm not sure if that can happen in a speed run. I have not lost a run to it, at least. Um, however, that being said, there are crashes that can happen in the context of a run, especially during boss fights. Um, for the pause menu crash, uh, if you want a quick way to crash your game, just go to the pause menu and start spamming, uh, spamming directions on your D-pad. After about 30 seconds or so, your game will crash. I don't know why. But it happens. This game was programmed. Just like how we don't really have to actually do the rhythm for this and can just do whatever. See, so let's have some fun. Yeah, whenever there's, uh, instances like this, we can hit both of them at the same time. There we go. So it makes some instances of this, uh, this rhythm section pretty funny. Because it's not at all what the rhythm is. Yeah, that 3DS was dead long, uh, long before this game released. Yeah, whenever this, uh, this minigame gets particularly intense, uh, you can just not care about the rhythm. You just press two buttons at once. Uh, yes, I believe it did come out in 2019. At least the remake did, which is what I'm playing right now. Yeah, by then, the 3DS was long dead. I think the Switch was already out for at least a year. I want to say. Alright, so time for the Carrot minigame, which is an infamous game, or infamous minigame in this game. A lot of people, myself included, um, have experiences with this in the original. That being said, it is a lot easier now. I mean, it also is kind of easy in the original as well, just, you know being young and nostalgia and all that other stuff. It is actually slightly easier in this. Because the enzymes we need to hit actually have a few attempts before they, they go outside of red. That's what we want. In the remake, or in, in the original, there's only one attempt. If you miss it, then rip. Of course we got the mash, which I am really bad at doing, it seems. Touch, please. So, this is the red enzyme, right there. Which breaks up everything. Hopefully I don't miss that. It's uh, pretty hard to miss. Unless you're not paying attention, which I have done several times this run. So. Yeah, I can't exactly give myself any credit there. I think it's the middle one here. Done. Time for the real deal. 
Uh, my, my personal best for this minigame is, I believe, 9 seconds. See if I can beat that. I probably won't. And my personal best, it ended up very poorly. I think I actually missed one of the enzymes as well, which was annoying. Alright. Don't miss an enzyme. Ah, uh, crap. This might be bad. I don't know where it is. Uh, right. No. Please? Thank you. Yeah, you, you have three attempts. So we're not going to be PBing on this. Come on. Oh! <laughs> no! Nowhere near a PB, that's for sure. I know how to play this minigame. I promise. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh boy. Come on. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, this is looking like a, a 15. Which is... Yikes. Yeah, nope, I, I'm... I messed up, so it's a 16. Oopsie. Okay, minigame done. Right. Don't say... Save. No! Every time. No! Stop it! I don't think I've ever had a run where I haven't said save. Uh, so annoying. One day I will have the run that just goes straight to the fight. It doesn't go through a few menus trying to actually start the battle. We'll get there, eventually. Okay, so a neat little tidbit about this fight. Um, Wiggler does not actually give you any experience. The experience Bowser gets from this fight is from inhaling the fly guys up top. Relief guys. Excuse me. So, if you want experience, uh, you have to actually inhale. If you don't want experience, you can not- Oh. Well, this is bad. Eh. Hey, both. Both! Nope. That's not good. I'll take the time to inhale. I need to hail two of these guys anyways. For experience. Again, for Bowser. Also for the bros as well. which is unfortunate. That saves- there, that loses time. I don't know why I keep mixing up saving and losing time. Attack Wiggler. Do not attack the segments. Attacking the segments is bad. I have done that. It is really slow. A Goomba Storm isn't broken yet. Please get an excellent. Later on, uh, not getting an excellent is an insta-death. I do mean that. I have had... Did I miss... What? I must have missed one. It's only 58. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, that's because we ended up equipping a piece of equipment that pretty much means if we do not deal an excellent hit, we take damage for the amount of damage that we deal to the enemy. And the amount of damage we're dealing to the enemy is so absurd that there is literally no way we can possibly survive. Even with a, a great punch, it is more than enough to take out our entire health bar and then some. Why am I punching? I shouldn't be using Goomba Storm right now. I was talking about punching, so I started thinking that I should punch. Oops. That's fine. We don't actually end up healing our BP in this fight. 
So just exhaust your PvP and then just keep punching. So whether or not you punch in between uh, Goomba Storms or not is entirely up to you. Just, uh, BP needs to be exhausted. And then punch. Preferably. It's fine. Okay, can I get some Leaf Guys again? Those are kind of important. Where will be now? Please. No? Uh... I need them. I need them. I... I think next turn Wiggler is gonna be dead, so I kinda need Leaf Guys now. If he doesn't give me Leaf Guys now, uh, I have to take another encounter as Bowser, and probably with the bros as well. Good, we're fine. The experience rating in this game is pretty tight. A four, a four, a four, a four, nice. This is one of the more tedious battles of the run. Um, one of the most annoying fights, actually probably the hardest in the run, is right after this. It can go in a lot of different directions. You could easily lose entire minutes based off of RNG. Really, really quickly. But let's hope that doesn't happen. Because I don't want to be sitting here for longer than I have to in this upcoming fight. Our button, please work. Thank you. Bonsai Bill. Alright, time to heal with the bros. Grip jars. Bowser is in pain because of a parasite that has invaded him. But not really a parasite, a bug that is causing trouble in his body right now. This is why you disinfect the things that you eat, usually. Otherwise, it is bad. leads to one of the most annoying fights in the entire game. Especially when it at a low level. Easy mode doesn't really make a difference. This fight sucks. Mm -hmm. Alright, Thermite. Please don't give me a billion straws. Please. Okay, let's see how this goes. I need to count to 149. 18. Twenty-four. Hammers deal more damage, by the way. I forgot to not uh it's forty-two. Sixty-seven. Wait, what? Sixty-seven. The 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 I fail safe seventy. I don't- I can't count, apparently. That's great. 84. <laughs> 103. I'm gonna not get hit by this attack. You can take damage from this. I'm pretty sure save a bit of time, but the chance of you getting power down from that is 
it's pretty low, but it is there. And if you get power down, uh, yeah, you're losing more than just a minute. More than just a minute. Yeah, this is not good. 117. Please hit any of them, please. Thank you. I think this might be too much damage. Okay, green shell next turn. Because uh, Dermite has 298 HP, 149 being Fury Phase. And we want to deal as much damage as we can into the Fury Phase as possible without going over. There we go. Is every turn that Dermite takes once in Fury is really bad. So minimizing that is really important for this fight and doing it fast. Because it gets pretty stall heavy otherwise. Straw fight? That'd be nice. Oh, God, they take a no straw dermite. Please. Probably jinxed it by saying that. Be nice. Wait, is she actually not gonna use a straw? Oh, well, that's not good. Maybe we didn't get the power down. That's fine. Don't use straw. Don't use a straw. Dang it. That's good. If Luigi would have got the power down there, we would have been in a predicament, because Luigi cannot kill the straw if he has power down. I don't even think Mario can. Might be wrong, though. Uh, if that happens, that is really bad. Also, whenever you use a green shell, it does not automatically target Thermite afterwards. It, it has to go through the animation of actually dying. So... Yeah, it kind of sucks either way whenever the straw gets put up, because you actually have to waste a turn and can't deal damage to Dermite in the process. Uh, yeah, this is why uh, dealing as much damage before Fury is important. Otherwise, she attacks multiple times per turn and then does this. Shouldn't be too much longer. Oh. Again, green shell because damage. Getting as few turns as possible is important. Do I want to risk it? Do I want to risk it? I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it. This is not what I should be doing right now, but I'm going to risk it anyways. Let's go. Can we finish her off now? I wasn't counting. I should have been counting. This is stupid. Don't do this. Yeah, that's what I thought. Whoopsies. Why Arena RPG to count whenever you're fighting enemies? Counting is important. It was knowing the amount of health your enemy has at all times. Then you can actually make informed decisions. Oh wow, not even close. No power down, that's fine. It's faster anyways, if it's not a power down. Okay, there might. There we go. Bro.
Dermite is done. Thankfully, that is one less tedious fight we have to deal with. We're not out, we're not done with the tedious fights quite yet. There's one more big one. This is gonna be coming up. So now we get our first piece of uh, movement, this Bowser. We no longer have to just walk around. Now we can glide. Which makes us move faster. Now an important difference between sliding in this game and the original is that in the original, you can enter loading zones with this. In the remake, you cannot. You actually have to wait for the animation to finish before you can enter the loading zone. Which is very annoying, for obvious reasons. It means you have to plan out when you punch, instead of just punching. I guess it leads to more thought and movement. Kinda, not really. Just more of an annoyance than anything. So we got the bonsai build for the cannon, and time to take back Bowser's castle. Also, this bonsai build does not rotate. It looks very weird in the cutscene. So we are coming up on our first giant battle. This is where the screen will be tilted. Unfortunately, I do not think there is a layout made for that, though. So whenever that happens, you all might have to tilt your head. It's fine. Uh, there's not really much to really see in the giant battles anyways. Just hit the thing, don't get hit. First, we have to go through the tutorial, though. Also, as said earlier, the giant battles really do not run that well. So the frame rate is really down. Yeah, just, just, just tilt the monitor. <laughs> Time to make a game actually starts. After this point, um, the game for giant battles will unlock uh, something where if you fail the minigame enough times, the story will progress. Or it'll allow you to progress the story without completing the minigame. For the final giant battle minigame, that is actually faster to do. It is faster to lose enough times so that the game literally has mercy on you and auto-completes the section. Um, for the second one, it is even. For the third one, it is slower because the game doesn't enable fast forward mode after failing for some strange reason. It's uh, exclusive to that one. And for this one, the very first, it isn't even enabled. You, you cannot get a mercy win on this tutorial. But it's slower to do so anyways because the tutorial plays out every single time. Vertical. Tilt your heads. Optionally, for those of you that don't want to see potentially low frame rates because this game is programmed, this can be seen as a food of wrath and break. Unfortunately, I can't really do either because I have to play the game. And the capture also doesn't really like this section because of the way I have to hold my 3DS. So, even more lower frame rates, because yay!
Again, not really much I can do about that, though. This is already taking up a lot of the, the 3DS's processing power, as it is. And it doesn't really look that good, either. Because, like, y you can see the polygons. But it really doesn't look that good. So, using fire in this battle is actually faster than punching. Just because of the animation that plays afterward when you punch. Instead, we breathe fire. I missed. does. Frame rate, come on. The capture is not being nice right now. And then again, low frame rate. And yes, this is supposed to be sideways. Uh, there is not actually a layout made for this. Also because it is very awkward to make layouts for giant battles anyways. So unfortunately, uh, you either have to tilt your head or optionally could treat this as a food break. Camera, capture, please, thank you. Please behave. It really doesn't like this section. Anyways, uh, it's over, so it's fine. Pretty quick. Like in Dream Team, there are finishing moves in this game. Whenever an enemy is weakened, you can't just kill them for some reason. So, we get an excellent on the first bit, and an okay on the second, because we do not want any of the cool animations to go with it. So at least the most anticlimactic punch on Earth. But the battle is won, so it doesn't matter too much. Victory! Alright, first giant battle done. As you can see, giant battles in this game do not give experience. They do in the original. And the fights were not balanced around that. So, we're gonna have to do a bit of grinding before endgame. Because otherwise, endgame is gonna suck. Actually, I'm pretty sure in Endgame, they actually buffed the fight. They made it harder, while also reducing the amount of experience you gain from... You know... <laughs> I don't really understand the reasoning behind buffing Endgame encounters, when they literally remove over half of Bowser's experience. I don't quite know their reasoning for it, but it's there. Take another encounter here. Because again, levels are more important than power. Though power is important. Ow. Okay. 
Oh, crap. Um, I didn't equip the, uh, the lightweight shell. Or the lucky ring. So this final requires another turn. Because I'm stupid. Well, good thing I remember it now. Because otherwise, Bowser's path is gonna suck. Alright, so, as you can see there, literally single digits worth of experience. If I hadn't got good RNG earlier with encounters, I would not have got this level up. Meaning I would have had to fight another encounter. Okay, I'm, I need to equip this now. This Bowser's path is gonna suck if I don't have the lightweight shell on. Does it increase speed? If that isn't on, then you actually can't run from the, uh, the fights in here. Okay, I'm gonna go to this. Refresh me. Shop. No. No, I don't need it. That's the second tutorial. You guys like tutorials about using bonus cards? Oh. <laughs> Screw you. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Shop. Accessories. No. Iron Fist Band. Counter Ring. By the way, these two items are literally only bought for one fight. In the whole run. That is it. One battle. Yeah. And they save a lot of time, too. this, just for safety. Not that I'm really going to be needing it, but just in case. <laughs> oh, this is why the lightweight shell is a thing. Because otherwise, you can't run from these. At first, you have to wait for them to attack, which is really slow. Also, dodging encounters in this area is just unrealistic. Especially that one. That one is really tedious to get to be where it where you want it. And it can just do what it did to me and just run into you anyways, even after setting it up. Oh, I wasn't looking. I should have looked before moving. Do you have lightweight chill? It does save time when you get into encounters. So, I mean, I guess you can see it as a time save within your time loss. That's the way I look at it. Free time save. <laughs> Kinda. Not really. It's still a time loss either way. Encounters are bad. <laughs> when you need them for grinding. I have ran this game before. Yep. I have- I have totally done that. Oh boy. This is a sketchy Bowser path. It's not the worst I've had, but it's pretty sketchy. The worst I've had is getting into literally every single encounter. No, I'm not kidding. I wish I was. What was that? No, no, please. I just want to. I just. I just want to move on. I just want to move on. Oh no! Insert bloody noises. Please don't hit it on the way back. Please, just don't get into any more encounters. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. It's rough. Really rough. Okay. 
this is the last rhythm game, or rather, rhythm, uh, arm game. So, uh, we're gonna have some fun again. And screw up the rhythm element to it, because why not? Yeah, it is uh, very easy to screw it up and still win. <laughs> In a way, probably. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't even open my mouth. Wow. Oh, oh. what? The? Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't try to do this. Maybe I should just actually play the minigame as intended. You know, like a nor- I promise I'm not this bad at this minigame on a regular- Oh, jeez. Please, just hit the things. Stop goofing off. This run is terrible. This run is terrible. I at least got to the funny part of it. I promise I'm not that bad. Maybe I am. Actually, I've lost quite a bit of time in actual runs of that, so... Maybe it's just a regular occurrence. By the way, these encounters suck. Please don't. Please. No. Please. There we go. We're fine. Everything is fine. Trun is scuffed. I can probably still PB because my PB is awful. <laughs> also true. This is where the run kind of gets a bit boring. I'm not gonna lie. And it's gonna be that way for the next hour. Which kind of sucks. Wait, I hope to make it entertaining. I can't really give any guarantees. Doing? Why am I going over there? What am I? What? Okay. Well. Yeah, no, we are quite a bit away from endgame. Uh, did I not properly I think I talked to these guys now? No? This. Why do I even bother questioning myself? Oops. I had it all fine, and then I decided to do that. Okay, I'm gonna save. Again, for safety. Also because whenever I do another run, I don't want to have the stupid upcoming minigame invalidate my run. That's a thing that can happen, by the way. If you don't save your game, and you complete a challenge node minigame, it saves to your save file. But if you don't have a save slot there, it saves to the empty file. So if you unknowingly do that, and do a run, 
the, the game will just give you the item for free when you go to do the minigame. Obviously, that's invalid. See, I, my, my uh, actual PB had that happen. It would have been a PB without that anyways, but still, just because that happened, I figured the run was just invalid anyways. It, it's stupid. So yeah, um, it, it's good practice to save your game during a run, to not have that happen. Because otherwise, it will happen, and your run will be invalid. Fun. Time for the mid fight. For real. GM. Except it's really, really long. I'm gonna try to... fish for a power-up. I'm gonna play bad for a second. Uh, kind of because it's it's using leftover file data, so it's kind of cheating. It's me. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh no! I have never. This has never happened before. It's the marathon standard. Great. This has never happened before. Please undizzy me. Thank you. And bad RNG. Great. Bad RNG twice. Not good. Yeah, uh, marathon run. This has never happened before. It's standard. So, we didn't get the power up. And we just got dizzy instead. Sure, I'll take it. Why not? Why am I getting excellent hits? Oh my gosh, I'm doing this. Right, it is faster to get great hits in this fight. I am being really stupid at the moment. So the reason why great hits are faster is because you don't actually have to do the animation. Though I guess excellent hits do do a decent amount of damage, so maybe it might be faster anyway so you get excellence. I don't know. Has this been timed? I think I timed this before and greats were faster. By like a, a little bit. But bigger numbers are fun, right? Also, yeah. Uh, risky strats. Um, getting hit there, uh, reduces the animation time. But it also might have a slight chance of making you dizzy, which will pretty much get you killed at low HP. There we go. I didn't die. Uh, because of being very, very reckless in this fight and obviously taking hits to make things shorter. If I get hit once outside of an intentional hit, I die. So, uh, yeah, let's not do that. You've got quite a bit of this fight left to go. I have lost runs to that, too. Even though Midbiss's attacks are relatively easy to avoid, that's gonna come back to bite me. That's that is 100% gonna come back to bite me. It's a marathon run. Never say something is easy during a marathon run because it isn't. Please don't hurt me with this, please. Be nice. I just want to not die to you in a marathon run. Come on. Yeah, this fight is relatively uneventful. Now that we're in low HP range. It's not exactly chill enough to really relax on, but it's also not really eventful enough to get hyped for. It just kind of exists. Honestly. That's how I feel about this entire mid-game section, is that it just kind of exists. You don't get to see bosses die really fast or anything of the sort. You just kind of play the game. Not really anything sick going on. 
that's kind of unfortunate. But there is the game, at least, so if you're here for that, that's a plus. Just encounters going as intended as possible. Don't worry, though. We'll, we'll, we'll be breaking them once we get past mid-game. Give it another hour or so. Uh, the good parts of the run are once we get to uh, the Wisdom fight. And onward. That's when things get really fun. I might be dead. I might be dead. I might be dead. Okay, we're fine. I messed up. Please don't scare me like that. So I, I, I try to buffer my punches there during that counterattack, and sometimes you can drop inputs doing that. I didn't want to do that. Okay, Nipus is dead. We're fine. No deaths. As intended. Okay, so, um, the experience you get from this fight, in this version, is the last forced encounter experience you get until endgame as Bowser. Because as I said before, giant battles don't give experience. In the original, they do. So you actually get quite a bit more experience, and it also is a lot more towards the end of the game. And again, they did not nerf the endgame encounters as Bowser, they buffed them. So, yeah, low-level runs of this game, uh, this remake, are fun. Don't you love fighting in-game bosses at level 7? That's a fun experience. So, um, oh, damn, missed it. Um, if you can mash frame perfectly here, uh, you can actually eat the plate that you just ate, so that Bowser literally eats nothing. And it also increments the counter for the food that you've, you've had. So that you can actually, uh, trigger this sequence when there's still food on the table. I've only ever have, had that happen once, but it is still pretty funny to see. I was kind of hoping to get it in the marathon, but again, it is frame perfect, and it only happens once throughout the whole run. You do get a few shots at it. Bowser is trapped now. Time to enter the blech part of the run, known as Flavazone. Also known as the grinding section, because we need experience. Otherwise, this upcoming boss is gonna be slow. I don't want slow. I want fast. Turns out actually fighting encounters is faster than just doing the fight normally. So we need the jump on it. I'm gonna switch to the map so that I can see where I'm going. Because every time I hate that Globin. Literally the past three or four runs, I have always tagged it with Luigi. Before that, never tagged it once. But nope, most recent runs, I've tagged it every time. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Luigi! Right, this is the badge tutorial. Pretty simple. Once I get started, that is. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, and I keep doing that. You just stop that. We got the great treasure. Which, yeah, badges. The badges kind of work the same well. It's kind of like Dream Team badges, in that you actually can store multiple badge charges. Um, in, the, in the original game, you cannot do that. You only have one full charged badge meter, and then you use it, and then it resets, and that's it. Okay. 
to make the meter full. I'm gonna kill this enemy here for extra experience just to be safe. Slightly unoptimal. It's fine. No, we don't want to try it. Now we can kill the enemies freely. to go through Flabstone and get the attack pieces that we need for the jump helmet. And then, we'll be getting an item that pretty much solidifies the speedrun. The Daredevil boots. Those increase, I think it's your power? Or rather, it multiplies the wearer's power by two. Except, uh, if you get hit, you die. Instant KO. Doesn't matter what your health is. Um, even if you emergency guard, it will kill you. Even if you have a giant shell up, it eats through the giant shell for a barrier, which gives you, I think, three free hits that where you take zero damage. It will eat through that. It will break it instantly and kill you through it. Yeah, uh, there is no escaping the one shot. So, bosses get a little bit more interesting, especially since... Once we get the uh, the power badge pretty soon, um, we need to build it all the way up to the final boss. Meaning, if we get hit and die, we lose the badge meter. There are only so many encounters that we can build that badge meter on. Which means if we get hit and die, we have to restart every fight that happens on because we won't get the meter otherwise. So bosses get... A a bit interesting from here on. There's also an upcoming item I'm about to get, which is the experience socks, which also means you have to take no damage as well on the brother it's equipped on. Uh, yeah. We can't just play the game and get hit. We have to do things well. Very well. Otherwise, the run is going to suck. A lot. Is that extra experience matters, and so does that badge meter. Oh boy, does that badge meter matter a lot. It matters a lot more than it should. Because if we don't build that badge meter, we can't kill the final boss in one attack. And that is bad. Because it has a new attack, and the new attack sucks. Ow. Too worried about stuff that's going to be happening later, and too little about uh, actually dodging encounters. We do not want to kill these yet, because doing so means less experience, and that's a bad idea. We also don't have Daredevil boots, so we can't kill them quickly. Oh, no, no, no. Eh, I kind of saw that coming. Dodging that one was going to suck. Time to sit through it again. Fun. Okay. Alright. Now we're out of Flab Zone. For now. We will be returning, of course. Get the power boots, even though they're not really required. So nice to have. Okay, good. It's in a good spot. That's that's perfect. Sometimes when you try to jump there, you will end up uh, bonking the, the meat, which is really bad. Again, we we cannot kill any enemies yet. They are required to be killed after we have the experience socks equipped for more experience. Mini game time! I'm gonna save my game! In the original game, you would save uh, further in, so that whenever you would complete this minigame, you would do a soft reset. 
because it saves the item status to your save file. That does not happen in this. And it instead saves the completion status of the minigame to your save file, so then you have to go in and go back to the challenge node and claim the item. Obviously, that is the worst possible change for us. Because we kind of need the item now. Also, yeah, enemies don't respawn uh, whenever you leave the area. So if we kill an enemy now, that means we're losing out on experience that we could otherwise get. Uh, so if I had done the weird save file thing, uh, I would have got the item from this minigame right now. And would not have to do this minigame. Which is kind of weird. I don't understand how this game works with save file. I mean, I do. Kind of. Not really. Here's hoping I get good RNG with clocks. So far, it seems like it's being nice to me. Usually it's nice, and then it just says no and doesn't give anything important. I've actually been stalled out um, with clocks in this minigame before. Where it refused to give me any clocks at all. For quite a while. Which basically meant I was forced to lose. Doesn't seem like it's going to force me to lose this time. I think we're fine. As long as I don't play stupid here, we're fine. Don't mess up. Don't grab that. Don't grab that. Please don't grab that. Thank you. That, well, that sucks. Uh, fuck, please. Thank you. Oh! Numbers? Numbers? What is it gonna do to me now? I, uh, what? It's give. It's being really nice to me. Why? I'll take it. But sh sure, game. You can be nice to me. What are you planning? What are you planning? I don't like this. What is it? Is it? What? Why? It's normally not this nice. Just give out clocks like this. Hey. So I'm not gonna say it. As soon as I say it, it's I'm gonna end up failing. That freezes the clock, so uh, all the red clocks keep spawn as well. Meaning we have free time to go. I'm not gonna be risky. Alright, we did it. Then again, done. Okay, there's an air to lose. No, I don't want to play again. Okay, so. First. Air to on Mario. XP socks. Also on Mario. Because we need experience for an upcoming battle. Uh, after we get the experience we want from this, um, we will be transitioning the XP socks to Luigi and the Perry glasses back to Mario for extra power for this boss strat. Um, Luigi also needs experience as well. Because he's going to be our primary damage dealer very soon. For now, it's Mario, so Mario needs the experience and power. Also means that Mario needs to kill these enemies. Because if uh, the wearer does not deal the final blow to the enemy, the wearer does not get the double experience. That is an, a change that they made to the experience socks in the remake. And it sucks. Yeah, worth keeping in mind, you do actually have to plot out what bro kills what enemy. So otherwise, you'll be missing crucial experience that you need. Slow fight. 
But we got some syrup jars in return for it, so that's fine. Okay, Luigi needs 20 BP. That is a requirement for this strat. It is an absolute requirement. I need to upgrade BP. There are people calling at this hour? Sorry for the loud noise. This is probably gonna happen again. This is gonna suck. I mean, oops. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Where am I going? I'm perfectly honest with you, that noise scared me. <laughs> that is awful. Anyways, we're gonna take a shortcut here. But please move. Thank you. Also, fun fact I have never had a phone call during a run before. I blame marathon luck. This marathon luck has been real strong this run. Hopefully, the storms that are moving through don't actually intensify because of marathon luck. That would really suck. Hey, it's marathon luck. Anything can happen, right? guys give quite a bit of experience. Nice syrup jar. That is really good. Because we will be needing those. Um, depending on how bad of RNG we get later on, uh, our run could end because of a lack of syrup jars. Not good to have that happen. Okay. The XP is pretty tight. This is the last possible encounter we can get in this area going this way. So hopefully I don't screw this up. Good. The BP is also right on cue. Because Luigi needs the BP. If he does not have 20 BP, the strat is not possible. It just isn't. She now has a 20 BP, so we're fine. This is power. And time to go to the next room and change our equipment around for a bit. Also heal up. That's also important. Okay, so Mario gets the parry glasses. Luigi gets the So the Alpha Cretan fight. Or Cretan. I don't really know how I want to pronounce it. At the time I switched around the pronunciations of it. I mean, it, it probably has a correct, then correct pronunciation. No. But obviously, I have stumbled around my words to so much that it doesn't really matter anymore. <laughs> Anyways, um, Mario has to end the first phase because otherwise, this strat is also not possible.
This strat is very particular and pretty precise on how you perform it. So we're going to try to do um, a one cycle of this boss. So during its second phase, um, <laughs> so during its second phase, um, once it reaches Fury and it, and the turn is over, uh, it will immediately go back to this form, which is terrible. You do not want that. Ah, crap! I gotta waste a turn. Oh boy! Well, um, do you know what that means? Time to die, I guess. Somehow, how do I die? How do I die? Uh, um, Mario. I, I guess we're just continuing. Because dying is too- Oh my gosh, dying is faster at this point on- What the- What is happening? Please just beat the boss. <sighs> well, the strat's not possible anymore either. I, I, I actually kind of want to throw. Um... I'm really tempted to throw. How much damage? Uh, uh, I'm gonna throw because I want the experience as well. For Luigi. Um, by the way, if you lose to a fight in this game, it gives you the retry prompt. So, losing isn't really that much of a time loss. I mean, I guess it is. It's fine. This is fine. Everything is okay. Now they're trolling. They're they're just trolling. They're just trolling. Please kill Luigi. I really need the experience. Just kill Luigi. Please. Thank you. No. Kill him! Please! Can you... Yes? Yes? Yes! Thank you! Uh, game over. First game over of the run! Oh no! Time to do this without being stupid. Hopefully. Oh, trust me, uh, Luigi will be doing a lot of the work later on in the run. A lot of the work. Waste a turn here. Now, we can do the strat for real this time. As long as I don't get hit. But at the very least, the strat is still go. Get hit. Because if I get hit with Luigi, I lose the experience, and I get hit with Mario, he dies when the strat is gone. So, yeah. Pretty, pretty tough. Okay. 
So the reason why this strat works is because uh, d killing it, or killing uh, the first phase with Mario, offsets the turn order so that we don't put them into Fury until the middle of our turn. And then after they're in Fury, we kill them. Before they, it ends the turn and they go straight to their uh, other form again. That was sketchy. It was super sketchy. <laughs> okay, it's fine. This is fine. This is fine. Everything is okay. I'm not panicking, you are. Okay. Alright, they're in Fury now. And this is why Luigi needs the 20 BP, because if he does not have 20 BP or above, you cannot do this. It is impossible. Unless you deal enough damage to kill them either in one jump helmet or two. Which is unrealistic. We lost a lot of time because of all the shenanigans with the experience and everything else, but it's dead. We did it, at least. <sighs> Second try. It's fine. That sucks, though. It looks like it's only 700 experience, and it is, but that, that experience, if, if you don't get that experience, that messes up a lot of fights going forward. Every bit of experience matters. <sighs> yeah, first try. Ooh. So uh, I'm gonna be right back real quick. Um, all this cutscene play out without without fast forward. It's only gonna be over thirty seconds. Give me a second. back and the cutscene didn't play out. I didn't stop it at the correct moment. 
My bad. It's fine. Okay, time for <laughs> one of the first glitches in the run. I yeah, know, right? This run has glitches? Bowser can shoot fire through walls. Because, yes. It skips uh, this entire cave section. Yeah, it's very, very weird that you can just shoot fire through the walls. Yeah, th this game wasn't really tested that much as, uh... Actually, we're... coming up on that. Yeah, the reason why the uh, the leftovers or uh, the leftover save thing um, is cheating is because it, it uses data from outside of the run, so it's like basically using another run's uh, completion data to influence a different run, which is why it is called it is considered cheating. Also, the capture is dying. Great, perfect. Thanks, NTR. <sighs> My internet is stable too. I don't know why. Come on, please stabilize for two seconds, please. Come on. I mean, there's not really much going on, so I guess it's fine. It's just a mini game. It isn't really eventful, so I mean, I guess better now than somewhere where it's important. Yeah, it could be. Here. Actually, actually timing this this leg minigame here after breaking those builders is pretty difficult for some reason. I don't really know why. But they made it a lot more difficult than it is in the original. Because uh, if you don't time it just right, your input is eaten. For some reason. I messed up. Go to the end. There we go. Alright. It's time for the bros to get their first actual overworld segment. I almost called it real world. Been playing too much Amori. <laughs> oh well. Yes, overworld, not real world. This is the real world. Bowser is real. Bowser is very real. Alright, first trip outside of Bowser. We're slowly creeping towards being ridiculously overpowered. Whoa. We're getting there. We're not quite there yet. Yeah.
Yeah, um, there is gonna be a lot of big numbers. Coming up. For now, though, we're kind of mediocre in terms of power. We're not underpowered, we're not overpowered. Yet. It'll happen, though, very shortly. We spin about... Two-fifths of the run being ridiculously overpowered. So it's a good chunk of the run to look forward to. Keep getting though. Oof. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you all saw that, right? I hit him. Uh, game is programmed. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I mess do that all the time. What's the difference now? Okay. Yeah, sure. Alright, we got the blue shell. Yeah, doing this game glitchless is pretty much impossible for stuff like that. Well, and then again, I guess glitchless isn't really if glitches happen at all, it's if glitches save time, but yeah, that's besides the point. So that glitch loses time. No comment. Oof. I can't breathe. Ow. I was gonna comment on that. My throat does not want me to. Ow. Why does it always do it when running this game? Oof. Anyways, as I was trying to say before being rudely interrupted and breaking out into a coughing fit, um, I played that very dumb. Normally, that encounter is free to avoid, but I didn't avoid it for free. Obviously. Now. I probably sound a bit muffled now because of that. Sorry about that, but... This one is just scuffed. It's just scuffed. Bad RNG. Bad real-life RNG. Everything, honestly. There, there's something else that could happen, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna think about it. Please hit the block. There we go. I said earlier, storms are rolling through, so there's always the possibility of, um, yeah. <laughs> Fun. Marathon luck, am I right? Anyways. Time for another quote-unquote boss. It's not really a boss, it's more just an encounter. I wouldn't count this as a boss. Don't get- oh, this is not good. Don't get hit. And I guess it's That's why it's not good, because that happens. It's fine, though. Um, Mario doesn't need the experience, or doesn't get double experience anyways, so we're fine.
Yeah, getting tilted in this game is pretty impossible, honestly. Just because of how meme it is. Oof. Just because of how scuffed normal runs are, I guess an actual marathon run has to be even more scuffed. I wonder what that means for soft Megalodons are in here. Hmm. Guess we'll see what happens when we get there. That's gonna be interesting. It could either be first try or it could be 20th try. Or somewhere in between. I hope it's not anywhere after two. Then it's gonna be bad. Yeah, uh, there's, there's farming for rare drops in this run. That's fun. Don't you love farming in speedruns? Don't get the Good. Toto Underground ran relatively well. Who the gyro controls? <laughs> nice. The gyro controls are also very odd in Dream Team. Very, very odd. So coming up is another glitch we're going to be using. Uh, actually, is it a glitch? It's more of an oversight. Um, I guess all glitches are oversights in their own right. So whether or not this is a glitch or not is up to you. Uh, it's still funny. And more, more evidence that this game was rushed. So, normally, after you defeat um, Junker in this game, which is a relatively late game boss, the blurbs are gone, and you can enter this house on the left here um, to get an item known as Muscle Wear, which increases your power by quite a bit. Or, if you don't want to do that, you can just use Mini Mario and enter this loading zone and get the Muscle Wear early. Yeah. I really don't know how this happened. But it did. We got the muscle wear. And it's pretty good. Plus 24 power. Just the, yep, casual 24 power. No big deal. Easy. So that's pretty major. Yeah, you are obviously not meant to do that. Yeah, that's because the, the loading zone for the house is actually misplaced. Obviously, letting you just kind of use Mini Mario's small height to just inch in. This game is weird. There are also some instances in, uh, certain loading zones and other, like, cave-like structures where if you use Mini Mario and jump in at the wrong area, uh, you will go out of bounds. And when you go out of bounds in this game, it triggers what is known as a failsafe, which actually reloads the whole area and sends you to a predetermined point based off of where you are in the story and where you actually are where you failsafe at. To make sure that you can't sequence break when you do it. It's basically the replacement for Superstar Saga Deluxe's, uh... Um, failsafe. In that game, if you went out of bounds, it would soft lock you by sending you straight down and to the right. So I think I would, uh... Take that over a soft lock. Also, yes, this game is actually pretty good. Um, a lot of people say to play the original, though, instead of the remake. Okay, so the remake was pretty rushed. This has been made very apparent by this run. Yeah, the Mario Luigi series is pretty good in general. Um, this game is... It depends on who you ask, this game is a bad remake of Bowser's Inside Story, but... 
Good morning, Luigi, in, in general, is pretty good. Okay, so I hope that Luigi gets to deal uh, a finishing blow. Or rather, um, hits Bowser when his HP is zero during this counterattack. If we kill him, because there is a possibility we could kill him during this counterattack. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Um, I could either kill him now with good RNG, or he's going to full heal. And I have to deplete his, his HP all over again. Because that's fun. Because whenever Bowser's, Bowser enters Fury in this game, uh, he, he full heals. Well, there goes the experience anyways. I'm stupid. I'm not resetting the fight. Nope. Missed it. Well, guess he's gonna heal. 999. Yay, isn't that fun? Don't you love it when that happens? Uh, if you get lucky, you can save, like, two minutes there. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to redo the entire fight over again, pretty much. Which is annoying, but, eh. He doesn't have much HP. He only has, like, 500. Or so. Like, I mean, it's it's very possible to kill him with that counterattack, but, again, good RNG. As you can see with the damage amounts, it is very possible. But Lucky. And Bowser's dead. Pretty terrible fight. Also, I missed the experience game. That's uh, a thousand experience gone. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Converted Bowser into shoes. So thus begins the hunt for the Star Curies. It's gonna lead us on our quest to become stupidly broken. It's gonna happen very soon. It's gonna take just one item to change everything. We'll be getting that very shortly. First, we have to do some minigames, though. Yeah, there is the bug we fought earlier. This is Wisdom. Ah. 
and Luigi falls. The standard. Just like how he fell in pump works earlier and made me lose a lot of time because I had to go down to get him. Thanks, Luigi. I'm still kind of salty about that. Hey, time to save. Because, uh, for some strange reason, in an upcoming area, my power loves to go out. So, for obvious reasons, uh, good spot to save. I really hope Marathon Luck doesn't say, screw this run, honestly. I hate it when the power goes out here. It's, it, it's stupid. I don't know why it keeps happening. Also, yes, it is It is true that Mario and Luigi is, uh, dead. Or at the very least, very likely isn't going to be getting an upcoming game. Because this game, unfortunately, or at least many, uh, bankrupted Alpha Dream. Though the, they were pretty much on a downward spiral, spiral ever since Paper Jam. But this game is a nail in the coffin. For sure. The sales numbers were... were bad. Nintendo did, did acquire the rights to the series, but uh, that doesn't really say much. They just have the rights to the series. That's it. Okay. News mini game time. Honestly, I actually really like the mini minigame. Yeah, Paper Jam was pretty rough, honestly. Yep, well, if I could d just go to the right area. Oh yeah, for those of you that haven't seen a Paper Jam speedrun, I would suggest going to watch one. Because it's something. Especially in any percent run. Paper Jam is something. Alright. Go down. Go down. Hit. Yes. Actually caught that. That's good. I didn't catch that one, though. Really have to... Use your head for the pole in minigame. No! That was almost really good. I messed it up. Dream Team is very debated. Um, Dream Team is also kind of where things started to go downhill for Alpha Dream. Um, Paper Jam being a huge indicator of that, especially after Paper Jam, things kind of fell. Decent nose minigame. Doing this minigame really well is so fun. There's so much, like, thought that has to go into that. Just, it, it, it's so, like, high-paced. Fast-paced, not high-paced. What am I talking about? Video games. Numbers. Not numbers. I can't even form sentences anymore. Okay. Uh, the power didn't go out. For some strange reason, in that room, on the way to this, the power always goes out. I do not know why. It's like... The... I don't know. Even when there aren't even storms anywhere nearby, the power just randomly go out in that room. For no reason. It's really stupid, honestly. This is terrible. Oh, this is really bad. Yeah, um, if you stay on one side of the screen and don't move after you hit these things, they will always spawn on the same side. So you can always tell where they're going to be. There's no, like, RNG in figuring out. Well, I guess there kind of is on, like, how high up they are. But there's no RNG in, like, going around the screen trying to figure out where they spawn at. Wait, 
we go up? Can we go up? Can we go up? Wait, no, not this room. Next room. Right. Forgot. Next room. Can we go up? 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 Uh, game? Please. Please? Hello? Okay, that was weird. Momentum. Because the momentum in this game can't just function correctly for five seconds. Yeah, I figured that was gonna happen. We want to run from this encounter. Also, we have 19 HP. That's not good. If I get hit here, I'm probably dead. But it's fine. So yeah, we are not gonna be getting any attacks as Bowser. That's the reason the Goomba Storm is absolutely busted. Trust me, it's busted. Uh, we'll be getting an item for that in a bit. For now, Goomba Storm is just meh. But it, it, it'll be really stupid very soon. Before our next uh, Bowser battle, actual Bowser battle, not giant battle, which I guess is kind of end game, but that's fine. Wow, I am doing really bad on the nose minigame today. Really bad on the nose minigame today. Please! Stop fumbling. There we go. Second giant battle. Again, as with the giant battle before, there isn't really a layout made for this, so you gotta tilt your head and all that other stuff. And again, frame rate warning, because this... Yeah, giant battles were rushed. They were also made by another company as well. Yeah, actually were made by Arzest. Arzest is behind some interesting work, so I'll leave it at that. Not very well received ones. Was it entirely RSS doing for this ending up as weird as it is? Probably not. It was probably Alpha Dream. For the most part. Since oh, Alpha Dream was overseeing this in the first place. But still. It's kind of a rip. Yeah. Yeah, that game... It, it, it's their biggest hit, all right. And that game has performance problems of its own. Like, pretty massive ones. Where the game would just go into a complete fit and not work. Yet it makes perfect sense why giant battles perform the way they do. Alright. Giant battle time. Tilt your heads, or optionally use this as food break. Oh yeah, no, Yoshi's New Island is um something. Very disappointed in that game, honestly. The soundtrack is also a thing. You like kazoos?
Okay. Now it's time to punch the thing. And not break my 3DS in the process, because I really suck at doing this. Okay, so... I need a little tidbit about the mashing in these giant battles in the remake. In the original, you can mash. In the remake, you have to tap at a very specific rhythm. It's around five five taps per second. If you tap too fast, uh, it doesn't work. Tap too slow, it doesn't work. The very specific rhythm. It says tap fast, but if you tap too fast, the game says no. It's very odd. It's a very, very, very specific rhythm you have to tap for. Basically, for every, um, pounding sound effect that happens there, you need to tap twice. That's what I use as an indicator. <laughs> Art says. <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional or not, but... <laughs> Good meme. good meme. Okay. We're gonna try to patch up the Yik Tower. We're not gonna allow that. Fire. Don't mess up the counterattack, please. Trying to press the button there and it's, it didn't want to work. Okay. In the water again, and now we get to punch it. After tapping a bit. Yeah, there are a lot of contributing factors um, into the game's kind of having a... I don't want to say fall from grace, necessarily. But there are definitely a lot of contributing factors to it. For sure. Okay, finishing blow, because there are no rewards for getting an excellent. None. It doesn't even give you more coins. I don't believe. It definitely doesn't give you any exclusive rewards. Like, like in Dream Team. And we're back to normal. Time for the most RNG part of the entire run. Because this is gonna suck. So pretty much what makes this part of the run so bad is we have to fight a very specific enemy and we have to fish for a 20% drop. 20%. If you don't get it, um... 
Yeah. Not good. Waste about a minute if you don't get it, I believe. Uh, this is an, a crucial item, by the way. So we have to get this. There is no backups or anything else. It's you get it or you don't. And if you miss it, well, you gotta keep trying. Uh, I had one run where it took me like 10 tries. Yeah, this could be bad. Really bad. So let's hope that doesn't happen. RNG, let's go. It's an experience to speedrun, honestly. It's definitely an experience. I just kind of meme with it. And not really, I don't really take it seriously too much. I mean, my runs kind of suck, but. Eh. As long as there's fun to be had, it's fine. Don't get the encounter, please! Thank you! There we go. Unavoidable encounter right here. Let's go! Okie dokie. This does not have the enemy we need for the drop, so we can't even use that for that, which is unfortunate. If it did, well, this would counter would be a lot better. But nope. Nope. I'm gonna switch off of Bowser. I can have a map. I guess I don't really need one. So nice to have one, I suppose. All right, so we need to get the uh, the star pieces here, so we can unlock this door. Also, while we're here, we're going to be getting attack pieces for the Super Bouncer. I didn't use the... Every time. Bah. Whatever, it's fine. We, we can just abuse physics to get up here anyways. Also, um, yeah, uh, you can turn this off. Normally, you're supposed to fall when this happens, whenever these are, uh, turn invisible. But no, you can just stand on the air. Because yes. Does anybody task this game? Uh, people have tasked the original game. Yes. Not the remake. Because 3DS tasking in, tasking in is, is in a very... Not good place at the moment. I don't even know if it's possible. It probably is. Right. This enemy. Bless RNG. Attempt number one. Right. Forgot. Gotta do this. First RP is done. And first attack piece. We need the super bouncer. We need it. It is very important. Yeah, but by the end of this dungeon. Dungeon? What am I saying? This isn't a. Yeah, whatever. Dungeon. Dungeon works. 
Everyone understands what dungeon means, I guess. Uh, by the end of this dungeon, we will be stupidly overpowered. And I do mean that. Let's go! Okie dokie. We have another chance at a drop here. No guarantees. Again, 20%. Nope. Try. I hope. No encounter, please. Thank you. Yeah, whenever you fall down there, uh, the enemy could be in the wrong spot, and you're forced into the encounter, no matter what you do. Which is obviously very stupid. There's a lot of RNG elements in this game. There's a, a lot. Even just really tiny things. I can get up there. Thank you. There we go. Just like a drill. Hmm. This is another tutorial that you aren't actually forced through. Um, and that Star Love actually lets you do it. It's pretty neat. Causing encounters in this is really dumb. Not even an enemy to help us. I tried to drill into the ground. Oh, 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 enemy. Chance. 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 Let's go. Please. Try. Energy is fun. Drops what's known as the software gloves, which is the most important piece of equipment in this run. Because whenever you equip it, 
Whenever you hammer an enemy, he gives you a very high chance of reducing an enemy's defense by 70%. Because it turns out, Alpha Dream confused a 1 and a 7. I'm not kidding. Literally confused a 1 and a 7. Yes! Drop. Okay, we're good. No more of this meme. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna be seeing some big numbers from here on out. Big numbers. Move. Might as well get my equipment set up now. Um, you. Drop your gloves. You can wear. Also wear. Yeah. I have actually seen people um confuse one ones and sevens before. I did tag this right. Yes, okay. Gotta tag it again. Just wanted to make sure. Um, but yes. People can confuse one and seven, and I have seen it happen. So I mean it's not entirely unrealistic, it's just funny to me. And it's such a huge mistake. Uh, actually minor, not really big. Such a small mistake led to this entire route being a thing. Yeah, this is why normal and easy mode strats are pretty much the same. At this point, there's not really a difference. does exist, and that instead of decreasing enemy defense, it increases enemy defense by 10%. Yes, it increases. So it's a useless item. It just buffs the enemy instead. So in both versions of the game, the item is bugged, just in different ways. Just for some strange reason, they cannot implement the softener gloves correctly. Both versions have bugs. One is a buff, and the other one is just absolute cheating. So pick your bug, I guess. I don't really know what it is with Alpha Dream and this item, but they messed it up. A lot. And they keep getting it wrong. Allegedly had QA. <laughs> Allegedly. It, it is a pretty funny thing to test for, though. So. Yep. At some point, that they mistook a plus with a minus, or uh, and then in the remake, they mistook a one and a seven. Alright, 
we have a super bouncer. Increase enemy defense by 130%. Yeah, enemy strats are gonna get pretty interesting from here on out. That much I can, I can assure you. And then, after this, our goal is to become as broken as possible with Bowser. Which will happen, trust me. It was actually part of the very first speedrun route, because, um, whenever I was messing around with the softer gloves it, on one of the X-Bosses, I noticed that I should not have dealt over 3,000 damage while being as underleveled as I was. But no, no, I, uh, I, I completely decimated the X-Boss. No issues. On normal mode, because Gauntlet forces normal mode. Yeah, it's a pretty major difference. Very major. It's the difference between 100 and well over a thousand. Yeah. I know I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do a um a fast wisdom. But I'm at least gonna be able to do a large chunk of wisdom's health. Almost to Wisdom. Just gotta take out first right here and not touch that enemy. There we go. I'm gonna grab the one up the Lux for super safety. Because you really shouldn't be dying in encounters. Save the game and continue. Don't forget to restore your HP and BP. HP doesn't matter. Sorry, game. BP does, though. I think I restored it already. Should've. Okay, so... Because of missing experience with Luigi, I'm not entirely sure how much damage I'm gonna be doing to Wisdom here. It is simply gonna be a lot, though. It's gonna be over half her health in one attack. That much I am 100% I am certain for. How much, though, is... I don't know. Get him out. Alright. RNG. Are you kidding me? Well, I have to get the RNG for it to work. Oh, jeez. Please. Thank you! Alright. Damage time! Let's go! How much damage does Luigi do? There's 219. There's another 219. Okay, I think this isn't enough. But it's, an, it's a lot. 290. Oh! There it is. There's the lucky. There she is. And done. Wisdom! 
Mouse strats. Yay. 70% decreased defense matters a lot. As you can see. It turns bosses into memes. Also, I would not have killed her if it was not for that lucky hit. That would not have killed. That was not enough damage. It, that just barely was enough with the lucky. So, uh, lucky saved time. That was a very nicely timed lucky. Normally, though, with enough experience, you do actually manage to kill without the lucky. Yeah, no. Um, here pretty soon, after the next boss fight, na next major boss fight with Mario and Luigi, we're gonna be fighting an X fight. Yes, a gauntlet fight. It's gonna go about the same. It's, you know. Seems. And that will give us an item that basically, uh, more than doubles our damage. And that item with Bowser has a scaling issue with Goomba Storm, as I said earlier. Where it multiplies the damage multiplier by two, for some reason. I don't really know why. There's a lot of weird issues with numbers in this game. Uh, uh but yeah. Uh, no, this was not before Dream Team. The remake isn't. Yeah, Bowser, with his special attack, Goomba Storm, becomes an absolute powerhouse. The, the actual game was before Dream Team, but not the remake. No, we are not done getting broken. We are just going to keep getting more and more and more broken. Never stops. So you can look forward to that with Bowser as well. Also, I am playing on easy mode, but keep in mind it's the exact same on normal, so it doesn't matter. That wisdom fight would have went about the same. And again, the gauntlet forces normal mode, so... Yeah. This is why I don't run normal mode for this game. Because it really doesn't matter. Like, at all. By end game, the fights are literally the same. see it that way. R uh, training for RNG was like the training arc. It's really weird anime. And then when we make Bowser broken, it's training arc 2. Bowser's is not RNG. At all. Well, it, it needs softener gloves. To make it worth it. So, I, I guess... Actually, it might not even... It might not even be possible without softener gloves. I don't know. I've never tried. Because fighting a, a level 35 enemy at, like, level 18 or 19 is not a good idea. For obvious reasons. 
Most of it's the gauntlet, so you have a very limited number of turns to kill the enemy in the first place. Yeah, whether or not you can even finish the fight at all without self gloves is uh, up in the air. Okay. I'm into Bowser's Path right now. This time with uh, less memes. We're actually going to start Bowser's training arc. That's what I'm going to be referring to it as now. The training arc. So there are actually some enemies that we can kill very, very quickly as Bowser. Okay, I'm just going to use Refresh Me. No. Refresh Me. Yes. Inside Bowser's Castle. Yeah, coming up some pretty easy encounters. That being said, it's RNG, whether or not we get the correct encounter, so I guess Bowser's training arc is RNG, in a way. Kinda. It's actually split into, like, three different segments as well. First there's this, then there's actually getting an item, and then... No, actually a few items. Um, and then there's the second part of the training arc, which involves grinding, again. So Bowser requires a bit more effort to become broken. Well, I guess the actual item itself is already busted. Alright, uh, here are some bombs. Bombs are susceptible to flames. And they blow up. And they give experience. So ne no need to really fight them. They just kind of blow up. If you use a fire first strike there, the, the fight will end, but the blitty will still be there. And you'll actually get a turn. I guess to prevent you from running away from the Blitty or something? Probably. I don't really know. Hey, okay, that's fight number one. We need three of those. Smash time. Right, leg mini game again. This, this like, minigame is kind of weird. Um, Bowser doesn't move much at all at first. You pretty much have to fight to really gain any momentum at all. And then all of a sudden, after this, instead of fighting to gain momentum again, it's just free for some reason. I don't really know why. And then a game over.
Okay. There are the bombs. Um, I'm gonna give a that. Um. Um, XP. Level 10. We need to get to level 12. On the next encounter we take we take that will get that will put us directly there, which is really nice. So this is the item where, if we don't get an excellent hit, we take the damage right back. That means, as soon as we equip that, after getting uh, the items um, that makes us overpowered, it will be an absolute requirement from then on to get all excellent hits as Bowser. Failing to get an excellent hit is an insta-death. There, no, th there is no recovering from that. It is just a complete insta-death. Very likely you're going to deal around 300 to 400 damage to yourself, possibly over a thousand. And, uh, yet yeah, no. You can't- I don't even think you can have over a thousand health in this game, can you? Is that even a thing you can do? Either way, bad. Bomb. Pretty sure the max is 999. And yes, that, that is from just a punch. Regular punch. I was just gonna get strong. Really strong. There's level 11. And level 12. Alright. Training arc 1 complete. For Bowser. We're not done, though. Entirely. Just for now. Is this it? Yes. No. Yes. Save. Yeah, I've done a lot of runs and I still get lost. Oh, well, I'm smart. Well, that's easy. All right, well. The game had mercy. Uh, no. It, it's the same distance. Time for one of the most infamous fights in the original. Except this time, it's not bad at all. Because there are no microphone mechanics in this version of the game.
Also, it is not faster to Mercy win this minigame. Because again, they, for whatever reason, forgot to enable fast forward after you fail this. For this specific giant battle. And only this one. I don't know why. Otherwise, it would be faster. Nope. Minigame? Kind of good, not really. Oh, um, y you think they did something good. Uh, they replaced it with something else that's kind of bad. The frame rate. This giant battle is one of the laggiest in the- actually, I think it is the laggiest giant battle in the game. It's bad. Really laggy, especially one specific specific section. That and it just looks terrible. Again, tilt your head. Or optional food break, water break, that kind of stuff. This fight is laggy. Really laggy. It's fine for now. It won't be. kind of 3DS do I use? New 3DS. This isn't even the laggiest section. So this is pretty laggy. Sometimes it'll actually drop inputs here. Which is really stupid. enemy here is gonna go into the hill. You all might remember that section of this fight. When it does that, this fight goes from okay in terms of performance to utter garbage. And the hill, I'll just let it speak for itself. In terms of what it looks like. It's not good. Not good. Not, not good. The inputs, please. Don't drop them. <laughs> I almost got hit there, even though I was spamming on the bottom. Yeah. It's, it's rough. Alright, here we go. Memes. Oh, almost time for memes, actually. I was mistaken. Right after this. So again, you cannot mash that. Memes. So, you have to breathe fire on this thing to, you know, it's grass and weak and all that stuff. Also, it just looks weird. Um, look at all the polygons. I can count the polygons. 
Breathing fire on this thing is bad. Really bad. Look at all the lag. Look at the frame rate. <laughs> Look at the frame rate whenever it gets hit. Just the effects being on screen is a huge frame rate moment. Hello? You gonna do I thought I saw Flock there for a second. Also, yikes. Yikes. The frame rate you are seeing is what I am seeing. It is that bad. It is rough. Really rough. I do not know why that this lags so much. Just that, uh... Also, yeah, going up to punch the thing as well lags a lot. It, it's fine zooming out, but no, zoomed in, all of the lag. Zooming out's fine, even though the effects are on screen. All the camera stuff just makes it die. Thanks, game. Also, yeah, this is not right at all. It's like the animation, the sound effects are tied um, to the frame rate, and it messes it all up. Oh, trust me, it is really laggy. It might not look laggy, but like, oof. It is very choppy. So yeah, it's still going, for some reason. It's fine whenever it zooms out. It's really smooth when it zooms out. Really choppy otherwise. And I do not understand why. Thanks, Bruce. If the hill's dead, the laggy part of the fight's done. We finally escape this. Alright, back to normal. So the giant battle's still aren't really full FPS. I don't think the giant battles are 60 FPS either. I think they're still 30. But like, at least it's near 30. During some parts of that hill battle, it dips to around 10. That and when breathing fire against this thing. moles. Also the frame rate. For these guys. He's really low. Alright. Good. And finishing blow time. Okay, finishing blow. On the next giant battle, I'm gonna go for an excellent finishing blow, though. Because the excellent finishing blow actually has a unique scene. So I might as well show it off. Uh, that also means getting an excellent finishing blow on the last giant battle is even more time loss. I think it's like 10 seconds of time loss, maybe. Maybe a bit more. It's pretty weird. Bubble Express done. All right, Guilt Shell. That is another important piece of equipment for Bowser. Really important. I cannot stress enough how important that is. It gives him a lot of power. Why they just give a literally the best shell in the game for power at this? I don't know, but they do. Right, time for Bowser Memory ML. And passwords. And puzzles.
Okay, so in this upcoming fight, um, there is a crash. If you try to optimize the fight with Green Shell, and you accident and you fail it after one of them dies, uh, that bro will die. Which is fine, I guess. When the other one dies, uh, the game will crash. Because it's supposed to kill both enemies at the same time. But it can't, because the other the other entity is gone. It doesn't exist. I did not heal. Rip. So what the game ends up doing is it gets confused, tries to reference an, an entity that no longer exists, and crashes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, green Shell is off limits for this. Yeah, um, if y'all want to see the crash, there should be a YouTube video uploaded by, uh, Snowman on, of course, YouTube. I just said that. I think you should search Bowser Memory ML Crash, I think it's called. It should be the video name on YouTube. Ew. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. It's something. I'll say that. But actually, uh, abusing softener gloves for this fight isn't really important. Because Super Bouncer is just broken. Normally, I, I would optimize this and do something like a green shell and kill him and fail it. But that would crash the game. So, nope, can't optimize. Optimizations are not allowed. It also puts added pressure on you for actually having to, you know, complete the attacks. Because if you do fail, the run is pretty much over if you didn't save. That's a bad thing. Anyways, Buzzer memory, memory ML. Pretty quick fight. I don't really get to do anything. Oh, yeah. oh I missed a stat roll. Oopsies, it doesn't really matter. puzzles. There is actually one fight where power matters, and that's for Bowser, and it's because your power can't be too high. If your power is too high, the fight is slower. Because the, the, the boss will start attacking a lot, as opposed to not. See, if your power is lower, you can do a face skip. If it's too high, you can't. Face skip doesn't work. Deal too much damage.
focus. Have to botch this. Even though I already botched it pretty hard. Pretty slow puzzle, honestly. Yeah, also, if you get a lucky hit during that fight, it will also mess up the strat. And make it slower. Yeah, there's also some RNG involved. Gotta get unlucky enough. Which is kind of funny. Normally you want a lucky hit, but no. This in this case, uh, you don't want a lucky hit. Does the code mean? I have no idea. There probably isn't a bigger meaning behind it. It's probably just random. But... Oh! Nice! We got the funny glitch, where if you mash too fast, the whites, the, bo the bottom screen stays white. Now we have to navigate to the gut check blindfolded, or blind. There we go. In the original, that is a soft lock. That is not recoverable. But they actually fixed the soft lock. They didn't fix the glitch itself, but they fixed the soft lock part of it. So at least there's that. Sorry about that. Memes. I'm gonna try to see if I can get the gift calculus. After the air duct tutorial. So I'm going to be doing the stair glitch after getting the power gloves here. Now, the stair glitch is kind of a weird bug when you stack on stairs. It abuses how stairs work, so you can then take the stair state off of the stairs. The stairs push the brothers together and... Wait, no. First of all, I need a badge. Need badges. Badges. Badges first, then stairs. Get 
badges. Alright, so let's go up here. Okay. So... As you can see... Uh, the bros are st stuck together. And whenever we stack and unstack, they get forced backwards. So what if I was to say, read a sign that enables fast forward, and then enter the loading zone with the pushback? Yeah. Memes. We can then take the fast forward state from something like a sign, and take it through a loading zone. So then we can just use it until it gets removed. This is called fast forward storage. It actually also reduces your hitbox size as well. Um, fortunately, we can't really use that anywhere. Yeah, now we just have fast forward. Except that's really hard to control. So good luck actually going anywhere without getting stuck. Really hard to control. You're an art. You are an art. You are no what the heck? Eh. Fast forward is done. <laughs> really sketchy, but we did it. Yeah, it's kind of a fast forward thing. Um, I've seen this game has have fast forage, fast forward storage. No, no, fast forward. I'm getting everything mixed up. Um, and then whenever you interrupt that, uh, you can take that in between rooms until fast forward is needed again, and then it's removed. Go in here. Boxes. We've got half the attack pieces now. Don't hit the enemy. Thank you. For some strange reason, um, none of the Bowser enemies actually target the brothers. Except for the, uh, the Pokies. But it's not the case in the original, I do not believe. Kind of a weird thing. In the remake, I don't know why they did that. Right. 
So, now it's time to go and grab the, well, no, not quite grab the final star here, but close. This is called Chakra and Early. We basically use the height that we yeah, boy. Um, that we gain from hitting an enemy. Okay. Okay. I'm not stupid. Right. And there it is. Skipping all of that. So it turns out we do not actually need uh, the air balloon power up, except for that one power up in Dimble or that one attack piece in Dimblewood. So if we could somehow get that attack piece, then all of that work just to get the air balloon for that one attack piece uh, can be skipped, which means. We can just get the third star here, here, and go straight to the end of the game. Pretty massive skip. So all all anyone has to do is find a failsafe right there in Dimblewood, because there is a way to clip up um, to get the attack piece, but there is not a way to clip out and get it, and, and get out with it quite yet. But if someone could figure that out, uh, we're in business. Big skip. We're so close. That is all that's needed. But we don't have it quite yet. to the woods. all the attack pieces we need to go into the next part of Dimble Woods. Also, fun fact, um, on the uh, 1.0 version of this game, if you save at the save block here, whenever you're solo, Lu solo Luigi, uh, you will have destroyed your save file if you reload it. Completely destroyed. There is no way to recover it. At all. For some strange reason, doing that causes uh, Luigi to enter a weird state where every time he touches a wall, he gets warped to the safe block immediately. Um, and whenever he enters a loading zone, he gets forced back into the loading zone, and it's just a non-stop loop of entering the loading zone. Where you literally cannot escape it. There is no escape. So yeah, um, do not save at that block. As solo Luigi. 
It is, it is a terrible mistake. Literally the worst thing you can do. It will ruin your save file. It has since been patched, but is worth keeping in mind anyways in case there's still anyone on version 1.0. But, yeah, they really messed up with that. Really badly. Alright. Scutzel fight. Fight is scary, because if you get hit once, game over. Luigi has the air devil roots. Every single source of damage that hits him, dead. That was not what I want. No, I wanted to touch the attack piece. More instances of spin jump not being required at all because the game's physics are broken. Time to use the Who Cannon and hopefully destroy them. Hopefully. This isn't a very uh, memorable part of the game. It is in the original, though. Okay. Yes, this is this is all in the original. There is pretty much no new content added to the base game, as far as I know. Who needs a bridge? Just spin jump. You're supposed to hit that black block there to get back. But, uh, nope. Just spin jump. Easy. R button. Oh my gosh, my R button doesn't want to work. There we go. Um, that's because there is a, a, a completely separate mode. Um, that is independent of this. Uh, it also has it its own save slot as well. Yeah, the, the two modes do not coincide with each other. At all. It's also an entirely different gameplay. Um, there are some equipment changes in this version, which uh, we are exploiting at the moment. Um, like, for example, the challenge medal. You'll remember that, that being hard mode in the original game and being accessible from the green shell challenge? 
That's been moved to Junker X. It's a Great Force now. Because Great Force... That also affects Bowser, too. Why is it still called the Challenge Medal? I have no idea. Because they really didn't feel like changing the name of it, but they still wanted it in the game. I guess. It's weird. Bowser Jr.'s journey is an auto-battler. Personally, I do not like it at all, but that's just my personal thing. Uh... There was one time on a stream, I, I left to go get food and use the restroom. And I came back and I perfected a stage. I, I, I didn't even interact with anything the game had to do. Nothing. I just left, left the DS on, came back, and it perfected the stage. So, I mean, if that's your thing, I guess. Yes, it is 60 on DS. That is correct. to enter one of the final areas in the game. We've got a fair bit to go still, though. Yeah, yeah this, this remake is pretty pointless. Honestly. Time to get the Mighty Meteor, which is actually a pretty good special attack. We will be using this. We will be using this. Oh, I want to watch it. No. Right, let's go. Honestly, I think that the this this speed game of the remake is better than the original. But again, personal preference and all that other stuff. Uh yes, it did nerf the magic window. Um, that being said, it, it added its own quirks in terms of equipment and things being absolutely busted. Because they weren't programmed correctly. So it it removed one busted thing and replaced it with other busted things. Also, the softener gloves are still as bugged as usual. Uh, however, this time, instead of being a 10% defense increase, it's now a 70% defense decrease. Yeah. Programming. I guess. <laughs> Confusing a 1 with a 7. Save the game. So, we're gonna be fighting Junker X here. I'm gonna be going for a neat little glitch. I'm going to put Mario and Luigi among the trash. See if I can pull it off. Usually I can get at least one bro among the trash. Let's see if I can get both. Ready, and let's 
go. Come on. Both got it. We are now among the trash. Trash these trash men. Luigi! Trash bros. Video game. I did not heal. Why do I never heal? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Defense down. Yay. And now, snack basket. This is now our new best attack. Or, yes, I think. It's really good. Really good. Also, fun fact, if you get hit by Dizzy here, um, whenever you're, like, way over here, what will happen is, um, whenever the, the chickens and everything from the trash can go to hit you, they will actually miss you. They, they won't hit you. They'll just fall and disappear. Forever. For some reason. You, you don't get hit either. It's a very weird moment. For sure. Attacking. Yes, that was a thousand damage. Big damage. And we're gonna do it again to kill it. Fourteen hundred damage. Um, he actually does chuck, a, chuck Luigi in a bin in this version if you do not mash it fast enough. And yes, this is still main game. Uh, we, we're not, we're not actually going to be doing the Bowser Jr.'s journey content because that's entirely separate. Beat Junker. You ready to go fight the X version? In the battle got what? Cause I am. Junker X time. <laughs> Let's go. No, I'm not kidding. Trash man. Trash man. I love, I love this. Okay. Time for Junker X. Let's do this. 
Don't grow X very, very, very soon. A B X Y L R Y X B A. for Bowser to take a back seat for just a second. We need to go to the challenge node. And fight Chucker X. Because we want the reward for this. Now, like I said earlier, we've been playing on easy mode this entire time. The gauntlet forces normal mode. So, we're about to see just how strong we really are. Against, what was it, level 35? Encounter? What is it? Yeah, level 35. We're level 20 with Luigi. Level 17 with Mario. Yeah. Um, if we get hit once, we're dead. So, no hit. Let's go. No mistakes. No mistakes. I almost mistaked. That's not really a word, but... That's down! Alright. That is really good RNG. Normally, I do not get defense down on Junker X first turn, and it sucks. This time we did. That's good. Yeah, big numbers incoming. Yeah. Also, normal mode, by the way. 961 damage. Against level 35 enemy. Recommended level 35. <laughs> How much damage? Can I get a lucky? Can I get a lucky? Nope, no lucky. Oh, there's a lucky. Not on the correct enemy, though. Eerie. Nice. Yeah, we have 15 turns. Uh, it's already over halfway dead. That says anything. I, I have beaten this fight in, uh, one turn, according to the game. When the turn's taken. At, at, during a run, actually. So, yeah, um... Th there's literally... 
no, no rush for time at all. All right, it's dead. GG, we win. This is Vengeonker X. Challenge medal. And time to equip it on Mario. There we go. Oh, nope. Bowser. 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 Bowser equipment. Guilt Shell, which increases our power by 45. Double edged Vang, which means we do a lot more damage, but if we take hits, if take a hit, we die. Rather not take a hit. If we uh, don't get an excellent, we die. Yeah. Um, challenge metal also affects Bowser, by the way. So uh, more damage. We need to get to level 16, which we can do in like two encounters in this area. This will be the final part of Bowser's training arc, and then it'll be time to put our skills to the test. Against a uh, really annoying boss under regular circumstances. I would not call this regular circumstances. <laughs> also, I'm not going to be getting the Magic Koopas. The original speedrun does grab the Magic Koopas. This run doesn't. Because they're actually. I think they're worse. I think they deal less damage. Might be wrong, though. Either way, they're not worth getting. You don't need them. Boomba Storm is too broken. Heck, just regular punch is too broken. Ah. I hate this enemy. This is a terrible encounter for experience as well. Really bad. So yeah, 48. A lot of damage from that. We're already really strong. Challenge Metal is really good. Really good. Super good for damage. Uh, no. The run does not get Magic Mirror. We do- we- we don't even need it. No one near close to needing it. Ah. Bad. Really bad. This counter is also... Good. I believe. Yeah, uh, the downside, if we get hit once, we die. This run sucks. We take a lot of damage. Alright, let's not do that again. Stop! Okay. 
grab that key. It's almost time to begin leveling. All these encounters kind of suck. They don't really give the experience we need. We don't have the correct enemy. Well, they have some of the correct enemies, but not in the correct formation. There are the magic hoopas. We don't need them. We're useless. Bad. Well, they're not bad. Necessarily. Oh, well, that. Oh. Mm. Okay. Suck at this game. Game over. Can we not keep dying to these things? It's really not hard. Thank you. Die this time. Yeah, that attack is also really slow. There we go. Are you not dead? Die. No, no, no. <laughs> Run might go overestimate. Right. What the heck? Yeah, that's how much damage we do. That's a lot of damage. Enough to one shot ourselves with a great punch. do that for some reason. I think, oh, I'm gonna great punch the enemy and not get an excellent to save on animation time. No. No, I'm not. Also works. It's an encounter. Yeah, look how much stronger we are now. Levels matter a lot. Crap. forced to get excellence here. If I don't, then it's instant death.
Okay. Final level for Bowser that isn't forced. Training arc for Bowser is done. That's all the levels we need for him. Oh, he's gonna do a lot of damage, too. The, the big damage numbers is not exclusive to the bros. Oh. Got scared there for a second. It, uh, one of the only times we actually have to interact with this machine. We didn't have to do that earlier. We skipped it. Okay, um, this happens in every single run. I cannot do this thing. Come on. Four, three, two, one, go. Every time. First, it's too far. Then it's not far enough. And then I get it. Third time's the charm, I guess. Right, we're nearing the end of this area. It's got a little mini game to do. Capture, please. Capture, please. Come on, capture. You can do it. You can catch up. Not that there's really much being missed at the moment. Still. What? Come on. Please. Hello? No. No. Capture. Hello? Any day now. What's going on? Panic basket. Panic basket. Hello? Capture? What happened? Where'd it go? What the? Hello? Uh, what is going on? Hello? Where'd the game go? Uh, where's the save point? I might have to restart the capture. Oh, is it back? It's back. I, I had to go into the pipe yard and try to leave Bowser for it to catch up. Bowser was schmoovin'. What was that? This friend is cursed. I was actually gonna go find a save point and restart the capture. So I'm kind of glad it came back when it did. I was trying to get back to Toad Town for an easy save point. I messed up. There we go. Hey, you could just stun lock them so they don't get to do anything. But if you mess up, then uh, if the game eats your input. Of course it does. Why wouldn't it do that? And then you just get shot with a fireball. Because of course. Gonna equip the power band plus now.
Gonna save the game again just in case something goes wrong. Like the capture, for example. That is one of the reasons I have been saving as well, in case I need to actually restart the capture. I think so. Pretty good. Off time. So I really hope that I don't do too much damage. Because if I do too much damage, we gotta sit through a few attacks. I, I don't want to do that. So, uh... Here's hoping, I guess. Storm. We want to deal 63 damage for a Goomba. That's the number they aim for. Any higher than that, and this man is ripping. How much damage we got? 63! Let's go! We're in business. We're in business. Okay. Stupid. The Stratus Rip, excuse me. Um, I'm not supposed to counterattack. I never mind, I'm dying. Okay. Fair. That that just seems to be this run, honestly. Get the strat or die. This run sucks. Let's do that again. A bit less bad. Don't counterattack. Do not counterattack. I think I can I can counterattack the bomb, but I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, then it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Now we can kill. So, what the theory does there is it causes, um, Blizzard Midvis here to then spawn the, um, uh, spawn the snow fawfles. Then he jumps up in the air again and then does another round of attacks. And then you can attack him and kill him. Or you can just do this and skip all of that. If you do too much damage, though, it doesn't work. Because, yeah. Funny strat. Lots of levels. Alright, time for the most annoying part of the whole run. And also the most stressful. Airway. Because we need to keep badges on the bros, which means we cannot lose a single bro. If one of them falls in the airway, we have to game over and reset the fight. That includes every single encounter in Airway. There are going to be encounters. There, there are unavoidable encounters in here. There's nothing we can do. That also includes the Dark Star. So, I'm going to be unequipping Daredevil Boots for safety on this thing. Because I really need the badge charge. If we do not have badges for the final boss, 
it's gonna be a rough time. Really rough time. Because the final boss has the, one of the most dumb attacks in the whole game. It's really dumb. For some reason, that they wanted to replace the spiral attack with something else. I said we are nearing the end of this game. We're getting there. It's been a long journey. Um, also, uh, I need to be careful in here, because there is a section with the platforms and whatnot. Um, if you use the hammer on them, if you use the hammer and run into the electricity on the platform, you still have to lock your game. If you spin jump into them, your 3DS hard crashes. It doesn't even crash handle. It just hard crashes. Whenever you close your 3DS when this happens, it does not actually turn down the brightness. Your system literally stays the same brightness. The 3DS forgets how to 3DS. And pressing the power button does nothing. You have to hard power off your system if you spin jump into the electricity in this area. The game does not like that. At all. I don't know why. I, 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 I don't know why. But it is a thing. You spin jump into electricity in this area, your 3DS dies. Holy. R button, please. You probably have jumped over that. I, I would show it, but obviously I... Yeah, no. Um. I'd rather not show that on a marathon run. I would show it if it's like a run I didn't really care about or just a casual stream or something, but... Mm. How does it get past testing? Honestly, I have no idea. Literally all of the bros moves in common- in common- yes. In combination with the, uh, the electricity fences, uh, will either soft luck or crash your game. So I have no idea how any of it got past testing, honestly. They really didn't even bother. That being said, the crash itself wasn't even documented anywhere that I could find. So, at the same time, it's not like it's something anyone's gonna really do. a save block right here. Um... Oh yeah, there's also a, a crash in the pause menu. Did I mention that? That'll be super easy to show off. If y'all want to see a crash. After I beat the run, though, and if we actually have time, which we probably won't. I don't really know. Yeah, um, if you have this game... A quick way to pause your or to crash your game is just boot up the uh, boot up the game, go into a save file, open the star menu, and just mash all the buttons on the D-pad. Just keep running it in circles for about a minute, and your game will crash. Why? I have no idea, but it does. This game is programmed. button. Yes. 
this game is programmed. Probably. Maybe. Maybe programmed. Store now has fists. I need to remove the idea of the boots from Luigi. Place them with the power boots or something, I guess. Sucks. Okay. Yes, got it. Nice. That is pretty precise to do. the cycle. Rip. Almost caught it. Worst enemy encounter in the whole game right here. My PB died to this like three times because of the stupid badges. That's why I removed the Daredevil boots. I hate that thing. Oh yeah, right here. Um, Easy way to crash your game. Wait, no, I don't think this is... Oh, there is the electricity right there. Don't do it. Don't. How I found it, I, w I was trying to find a more consistent way to get this thing to stop. Um. Yeah, you can use the hammer and various other tools to get it to stop. Keep in mind, touch the electricity with it, runs dead. Stack, runs dead. Hammer, runs dead. Luigi hitting Mario? Uh, runs dead. Game doesn't like that either. Really rough. That being said, I can use the hammer during this. The game is fine with this. I think. Under normal circumstances, it is. So I'm gonna go with yes. Please let me go up. Thank you.
disappeared. No! Controls, please! Ice physics, yeah! Controls, hello! Because I, I used the uh, the drill move to stack. That is another thing that they forgot to animate or program properly. Just coming out of that pipe and using drill. It just makes you disappear. Even though the animation for that clearly exists in the game files. Because, you know, front-facing drill should exist for obvious reasons. Like, you know, in the overworld? I don't know. This game is weird. Make the go! Okie dokie. Go. Yeah, this run is pretty terrible. I promise we're nearing the end, though. We are indeed nearing the end. It would be funny if this ends up being a PB, but I highly doubt it. I'm not actually timing, so I have no idea. This airway was a lot better than my PB's airway, though, that's for sure. Again, save. Make sure everyone's upgraded. They are. Good. Not upgraded, fully healed. Excuse me. Dark Star. I actually don't know what my Dark Star split is in my PV. It exists. Um, okay. So, the reason why I unequipped Daredevil Boots is because there is one part of this fight that I cannot consistently do. I don't want to die. Because if, if you lose the badges down there, you have to build up all that meteor again before the final boss. This is the last fight before the final boss. So, uh, n no, that's not happening. Instead, I can just... Hey, get eat. Or get tripped twice. What? Oh. 
I probably just has a cold. We're still doing 128 damage, though. Thanks, challenge medal. I don't need to waste a turn. Also, shoutouts to the brand new Dark Star theme in the remake. This song is not in the original. Daredevil boots that might have killed. It's doubtful. Um, either way, we now have the badge that we need to finish this run. So we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna go for a time save here. Um, you don't actually want, need to let the bros run off the screen. Because doing that is a time waste. Instead, they can go straight to this. And the game kind of glitches out a bit with the screen effect. Also saves time, because they don't have to run back as much. It's a neat little optimization. That was actually found more recently. star rank. It is now time for the last giant battle of the run. Guess what that means? It's time to mercy win on the minigame. Mechanic introduced in Paper Jam. Thanks, Paper Jam. What this means is if you fail at a minigame enough times, the game will just automatically win the minigame for you. We're asking if you want to continue with the story. So, uh, yeah, that is actually faster than doing this minigame. Again. Gonna save the game. Don't forget to restore your HP and BP. No. Do -do -do. <laughs> right. Get ready for mercy win. Mercy win. 
Mercy win. What? Oh no, my coins. Oh no, my coins. Oh, dang it. Go, um, channel, please. Yes. Fast forward, please. Oh no, my coins. It should be right after this, I think. Should be. Yep, there it is. Winning game done. We did it. We won. Speedruns aren't always skillful. <laughs> Sometimes you have to fail instead of win to do better. <laughs> Another giant battle as usual. Frame rate might go crazy. Congratulations, you lost. It's a mechanic introduced in Paper Jam. Thanks, Paper Jam. This is actually the first time we get the mushroom. Not it. In the Japanese version, it actually says get. And by the way, Japanese version is faster because of loads. So, uh, get. I, I kind of forget anyways that got it. <laughs> Even just because it's funny. An unavoidable attack. Oh no, we got hit as gi giant Bowser. Oh no. Frame rate. Frame rate again. Yay. I love this capture. Perfect. That attack might not have hurt Bowser, but it sure hurt the frame rate. Of the capture. I consider that a success. Kinda. Okay, I guess it did hurt Bowser too. 
That's six to sex. Bleh, this success. I cannot word. Brain does not work. Punch. The giant photos are the absolute worst part of this game. They also don't even give experience anymore. And the final fights were buffed. And weren't balanced around that. So that's fun. Just grind, Kappa. No, I got hit. Yeah, the giant battles are really laggy. For some strange reason. This game is programmed. Also, doesn't help that the, the capture also relies on the 3DS CPU. Which is already struggling as it is with this. So you know how that works. Trying to capture the screen when it's already struggling? Yeah, no. The capture frame rate is gonna kinda take a nosedive. So oftentimes what you're seeing is what I'm seeing. It's pretty bad, except for when it does that. There isn't any of that, but it's still pretty bad. Because the, the capture right now is fine. It's literally this the same frame rate it's been the entire time. Uh, but yeah, no. It's just the, the frames that it's trying to capture don't exist. Black hole in game. Punch. Boo system. Don't miss. Uh, it, oh, it lags. It lags. That that is that is not a thing with with capturing. It's just that the capture kind of takes a nosedive a bit. The battle itself still lags a lot when captured, or without being captured. Just because this is programmed. This is a new 3DS, by the way. I do not want to know how this performs on an old 3DS. I can't imagine it performs that well. Honestly. I, I really can't imagine it performs that well. This is the reason, probably, why this game is capped at 30 FPS. Because it, it couldn't even push 30. Like trying to hit 60. Yeah, no, it would make this even more jarring. Alright, we're at the end of the fight. There's a cool little uh, tactic I use for knowing when to slide and attack. When Bowser roars, well, after it gets in here, I'm just gonna do its little thing. I'm gonna attack it. All right, so Bowser's gonna roar. Attack. Bowser roars. Attack. Roars. Attack. Works every time.
Also, uh, it, it's upright because this is a giant battle. Where the, 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 the 3DS is tilted sideways. There isn't a layout for that, unfortunately. Alright, so, we're at the end of the last giant battle. You know what that means. We're gonna get an excellent finishing blow, just so I can show what that looks like. And, we're also going to get the, uh, the, the extra cinematic that is just for this fight. Keep in mind, this does cost me, like, what, 10 seconds or so? It's a decent amount of time loss for doing this. Um, but I'm still gonna do it anyways, just to show what it looks like, because cool space sequence, I guess. Let's go for it. Excellent finish. Also, that lag. That frame rate is awful right now. There we go. Doom. This does not happen if you get an okay. All of this is skipped. It's like every single other finishing blow. Yep, this is why we okay finishing blow on every single battle. Well, this is the only fight it does the space cinematic on, but this one especially. Okay finishing blow. For sure. Way slower to not do it. Okay, well, that's done. Okay, so... We're gonna get a piece of equipment here. Called... The Intruder Vangs. You might remember that being exclusive to Bowser's final secret rank up as a reward. And that it gives you two turns, right? Yeah, uh, it's that exact same item. Just uh, put in the main game. And repurposed. It's the exact same item. Just uh, you get rewarded for just playing the game. Not even for getting a secret rank up, just for playing. So yeah, that's a thing. We'll be using that, by the way. Oh, yeah. Kinda weird they just placed that there. Let me just make sure I'm healed up. Bros are healed up. So again, um, exclusive theme. This is only in the remake. This theme does not play in the original. And, uh, so normally with this fight, you wouldn't inhale the, uh, the helmet, right? We don't- we're not doing that. Nope. Screw the helmet. We're just gonna attack Dark Fawful. You might be saying, but he heals, right? Yes. I don't think that matters. He only heals 500 HP. I don't think that matters. I really don't think that matters. Um, the next turn he's dead. Because he, he cannot heal when his HP is at zero. I can't heal if I'm dead. Okay. Why is it on every single battle I game over? What is this run? Please stop dying. I don't think I've had a fight where I haven't died yet. Whatever, we're doing the fight. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I guess that's faster. Sure, we're I'm accepting it. It doesn't really matter, honestly. Just die, Dark Fawful, please. I can only- I can only take two hits. 
Um, that being said, all of his attacks are really easy to dodge, so I'm just being stupid. Anyways, uh, yeah, um, no, he cannot out- he cannot out-heal 1900 damage. That is just not happening. Luckily, he heals out of the range for him to do his really stupid attack in Phase 2. He has some pretty dicey attacks. For one attack in particular. It's rough. See, I know how to dodge attacks. Wow. Attacking? Should've bunched. It's fine. Whatever. Uh, he's dead. Zip. We did it. We beat Dark Fawful. He is now Dead Boy DX. Bit of Dark Fawful DX. Dead Boy DX. Yep. Alright, well. GG. Also, the helmet just snaps to Dark Fawful for some reason there. I don't know why. Bros do not get experience for this because they did not participate in the battle, and it doesn't really matter because the bros are fine. Alright. Dark Fawful. That is done. Uh, time for the final boss. This is it. Uh, we need to change our equipment one last time. Before the final boss. And then we are set. Bowser needs the intruder bangs, and Luigi needs the dark star wear, and Mario needs the muscle wear. That is it. And it's just beating Dark Bowser. Also keep in mind, the intruder bangs gives us two turns. So, uh, eh. Leads to a neat little skip in the Dark Bowser battle. Which we're gonna gladly use. Normally in the original you have to counterattack him and kill him to get the skip. But nope, we don't need to do that anymore. True doing that. Why do that when you can just get, get another turn? Because that's a thing you can do. Dark Starware. Awesome. Also, Luigi needs the Daredevil dude. Bowser time. Uh, no, actually. Because Devil Edge Vang uh, lets us deal more damage. So you have to attack more to do the same amount of damage, pretty much, because of how uh, it works. Nice! Good Dark- good Dark Bowser. Good. That was really clean. Basically, um, he, he still heals after being attacked, so it just wastes time. Because of the lower damage output, you need a, a third attack to kill him in the next turn. So it's the exact same as opposed to just attacking twice. Of animations. All right. Well, here we go. Dark Bowser, final boss. This is the end.
We get to use both overpowered sides of the party. Both are really overpowered. Let's go. One final Goomba Storm to finish it off. So because we have the Intruder Vangs, uh, Dark Bowser, which would normally, um, send us on, uh, into the background, or rather into the, the back, while he throws his minions at us, oh, that doesn't happen! Because the Intruder Vangs, we get a second turn, so that entire phase is skipped, and we need to not die. Don't die! Thank you. Alright, it's time for the bros to take over. We have that badge right there. That's that's our card. That's our ticket to victory. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. Getting hit here is really bad. For either bro. Helmet. All right. One glass taken care of. Nice damage. I think that speaks for itself. Excellent jump there. Does more damage than the jump helmet, because of course it does. Alright. Alright. Alright, the jump with the brothers. Let's do this. Basket. And it's down, and one last attack. Your next attack will be three times as powerful. We already have 2.5 times damage with Luigi that already has double power. Let's go. Damage. By the way, uh, it's dead. It wasn't obvious. It's dead. 3042 overkill. Dead. I do not believe Luigi can jump when using Snack Basket in the original, no. Alright, well, time for mashing. Unfortunately, the music does not stop for this like it does in the original. Boom. One, six, nine, zero. 
funny numbers. This route totally didn't have those numbers planned out. Haha. Uh -huh. Whatever. Uh, Dark Bowser is done. Um. So pretty much the run is finished. Uh, there is nothing left. But time does not actually stop until the, the present is opened after the credits. So, technically speaking, the timer's still going. But the run is over. Because they're still text mashing, so the game technically isn't over. So yeah, this was an interesting run. Definitely not PB. That's for sure. If I didn't get screwed over, it probably would have been a PB. And no, this is not time. The run is not over, technically, yet. Time doesn't end until the, cre until the present is opened. After credits. Because there is actually still dialogue boxes after credits, so the game isn't over. Also, we're not we're not at the results screen yet either. Last text box. Uh, yeah, the time is on last text box in these games, which depending on where that is might mean you have to watch the credits. So there's our zest. Hi, our zest. Thanks for making the giant battles laggy. <laughs> yeah, the estimate was pretty generous. I'm honestly surprised the run went as well as it did, all things considered. I could have PB'd if I didn't get screwed over. Right, they're not really screwed over. If I didn't make so many mistakes, this would have been a PB. For sure. But. Overall, pretty decent run. I, I think this was a good showcase of the game. I suppose I can at least showcase the crash after credits, even though time is over. I can just quickly skip through the results screen and end my my showcase of this game on, at a crash. That seems like a good place to end, right? Crashing in the pause menu. That's where we're going to end it at, even though time is going to end on present. Pretty quick. take long and it seems like we're quite a bit underestimate so should be fine hard crash seems like a fun end i don't know if i saved near that or not uh i don't think i did so I don't think I have time to go back for that before the, before the next run gets put on. 
Also, to keep people waiting, I'll just go for something quick. For a real quick showcase of how this game is programmed. The, the pause menu not functioning correctly. It's a pretty good showcase of a game's quality, I guess. Right? <laughs> Even though this is a thanks for playing screen and everything, it's still not time yet. We're almost there. Promise. Almost. If I can fast forward. Maybe. Alright. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout when. It's very soon. We're gonna leave, and then Bowser's gonna do it. Okay. Uh... Time. The end. The run is over. We did it. Oh. Yep. These are our final ranks. Alright, so, real quick, before I go... Crash. Should be quick. Just you know, need a load of save, pause the game, crash the game. Easy. That's not hard to do at all. Open the game, pause the game. Timer still going. Uh, all right, game crashed. That's it for me. That's all I have. Yep, the game crashed. That's it. My 3DS has to shut down now. <laughs> An exception occurred. Exception type, data abort, since I have homebrew and all that stuff that showcases exactly why it crashes. Pretty, uh, well-programmed game. Yeah, this game was programmed. Pretty fun speedrun. Interesting game, though. Yep. All you gotta do is just open the pause menu and shuffle through the menu for a good 30 to 40 seconds. And then the game dies. Yeah, luckily the crash was after the run, and intentional this time. Not during it. I'm not sure how this crash works, other than you shuffle around in the menu. It might be a percent chance kind of thing. If it is, that would suck. Yeah, it might just be something, you know, like a memory leak. Probably. Well, that's all I have. Thanks for coming by and uh, seeing Bowser's Inside Story. I hope it was a fun showcase. It, was, it sure was fun to run. Thanks for having me. Not sure if there's another run slotted directly after this or if there's a break.